Please sponsor me. We're very poor and I like your fizzy water. <laughs> How goes it, Chornerus? Coming in, coming in. Hello, hello. Puns? Man, it's, it's so weird, puns. There's, there's like this strange, almost ethereal, ghostly sound that kind of sounded like you a second ago, but I must have just been imagining shit. <laughs> How are you doing, friend? Also, boo on Twitch for getting rid of spooky bits. How you doing? Come on in, friends. Come on in. Uh, I've been um, uh, just downloading today's games because uh, there's one particular title that we've talked about a lot that I want to show you today. Um, oh, I, so I think most of you are either like know it or are aware of it, but I figured it'd be a good game to really get stuck into today. I also downloaded a couple of others, so we got like a bit of a grab bag. Um, but yeah, catching up on all the April Fool stuff. There hasn't been too, too many, like, out-and-out -out bangers. Uh, I think Sonic is Dead is the current, like... Excuse me. Is the current leader. But... Uh, but I've been, uh, I've been catching up on a few. Anyway, sorry, how are you all doing? Um, Alnus, Wolfcred, Watto and welcome. Um, what's going on with me? Uh, after yesterday's stream, uh, Nick very kindly gave me a copy of Terra Nil, and I played it for three hours, and it was glorious. Uh, there's something about a game which is purely about, like, make the world better and leave no footprint that just hits a really good beat but scratches the same itch in my tiny brain that Wetrix used to hit. Uh, and puns, I know what you mean, but what's been fascinating is like ever since, you know, ever since the Great Plague, like people don't actually try and pull a fast one. It's all about like, what's the dumbest joke we can do for a whole ass, um, for a whole ass group of people. So like, uh, Fraser looking at video games turned into Niles looking at video games. Um, the Death of Sonic is an actual visual novel you can play where it's like a murder on the Orient Express, Sonic edition. Uh, Corsair announced uh, fidget toy keycaps. <laughs> um, the only one that got a few of us was the, um, the what was it? Uh, the Ghost Meg Tracker for uh, one of the Sea of Thieves sites, and it was actually just a whack-a-mole game and a bit... Oh, Hookshot, Watto and welcome. Yeah, and uh, Wolfgrad, I wholeheartedly agree, and I'm, I'm glad that's the way in which it's kind of moving, like, at least in the game space. Uh... I'm just having a look at uh, what Chauner has posted. Oh, I love it. No, I unironically love it. Uh, so, friends, Chona has posted a screenshot from Magic Arena, and it's like shitty school table with pizza, and like the card backs are like beat to fuck old Magic cards. Ah, oh, good times. That just makes me that just makes me happy and a little nostalgic, you know. Oh, uh, Fiona found a, 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 can of, a crate the liquid death on sale, so I've got the good fizzy water today. It's like my little my little treat. But 
Like, as you know, we don't really do April Fools here, longship wise. What's happened in the past is that, you know, the longship has messed with me. Um, but, like, I'm trying to get stuff together for, for longship day next week and get my taxes sorted and all sorts. So, yeah, my downtime is writing, 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 blink, play Terra Nil, cleaning, cleaning, writing, writing. Ah, oh, Kaimbal, how are you doing, friend? Uh, I saw your hearts. How are you so fucking cool at shit? <laughs> I'm still trying to do my next Gundam build. Oh, hardy bloody ha, hookshot. Hardy bloody ha. <laughs> Wolf grab with Will, I'd never mess with you. <laughs> Just kidding, April Fool's totally would. Anyway, how are you all doing? Um, yeah, honestly, like playing Terra Nil is kind of like my uh, my only the only thing that I have done since I have seen you of note. Um, I'm still drooling over the Resi 4 remake, um, and it's one of those ones where like I'll probably be behind you all, but it's I I, I just. Resident Evil's always been such a big part of my life. Uh, and Dave, Watto and welcome. Uh, I've been on a kicker for the last couple, I guess it's been a month now, of like ambient video game music from like the 90s and 2000s. Because, you know, I I guess like, especially during like the, the GameCube era, I'd have a lot of these soundtracks just idling. So... This, this is like comfort music for me, weirdly. And especially when it ticks over into the uh, Unreal Tournament soundtrack. Like, yo. Oh no! So Hookshot says they didn't get the bad lurg in America. Because uh, Hookshot was visiting from Australia. But their partner did from one person at work. No! Uh, we miscalculated how many tests we have. So, Fiona is still negative. Uh, I want to do one more test before I declare hanging out with people, because I'm a bit sniffly, and I've... I woke up with a headache. I haven't been drinking for four days. Like, I was under the impression that if I cut alcohol for a few days, I'm going to feel better, not worse. What the shit? This is bullshit. I don't, okay, I officially don't get straight edge people. You're sober and everything sucks. <laughs> A terrible combo. <laughs> no, I think I told you all, like, I'm just, I'm trying to dry out after GDC just because um, I was kind of using booze as a way to, like, wind down in the evenings, which isn't bad. But as my friend Charlie would say, is like, anytime you need alcohol as a solution to a problem, lol, solution, that's when you need to, like, take an evaluation. So, yeah, I'm giving my internal organs a break for a few weeks. Yeah, so, Hookshot, I mean, it's entirely possible that I just have a bum cold. That's why you all got the chair when I started, because I was like, you know what? I don't have to sit here. I can just take painkillers and not feel like crap. It's great. <laughs> oh. I oh, know, genre is like, uh, I mean, I'm still staying as hydrated as I can. Uh, and I haven't really replaced it with anything. I mean, these little, these buggers help because I have a dumb lizard brain and drinking, like, punk designed tall boys somehow tricks my brain into thinking that I'm having a good time. And I'm okay with that. My brain's dumb and stupid anyway. It's a lump of fat and electricity that uh, keeps me up at night. Oh yeah, and Hookshot, I mean, I, I've never experienced it, but from friends that have kids, it's like, you just have to accept that waves of colds are going to go through the house. Like, you know, my immune system's probably the weakest it's been, because like, during lockdown, who was it? It's just me and Fiona, right? So it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if I got a stinker of a cold from GDC. 
Anyway. Um, how are you all doing? What are you playing? Um, oh, yeah, Kaimbo, I am currently working on, where is it? This mother hubbard. Uh, now this is just a personal project. This isn't for like uh, a contest or anything. Um, but I got this mother hubbard ages, ages back, which I believe was a gift from one of you. But it's been so long. I, I should have really written gift or not gift on the back of them. But I'm a dingleberry. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this sucker is I'm going to do a paint job on all the uh, like the pastel pink because I don't mind I, I don't even mind pink Gundams but this feels like someone ordered a pink Gundam and then got cold feet and then kind of like chickened out like oh I don't want people to think I'm not a cool pilot so I better, I better have it less pink but firstly own that shit secondly like we can do better uh, plus, that's one of the ones where you have like a skeletal structure and then you lock the armor pieces on, making it really good for doing paint jobs. I just haven't decided what kind of paint job to do. Honestly, I'm almost tempted to do like an ice white and then use some of like the, the Sakura decals I've had for a thousand years. So yeah. And Fearless, Wato and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Cheers to you, friend. Um, oh, so Chorderus has uh, finished all the songs for Final Fantasy uh, Theorhythm. Theorhythm. God darn it. I, I swear they mashed together theatre and rhythm just to mess with me personally. Oh, you're the final boss. Okay. Well, good luck. I believe in you. Glad you're doing better, and I hope you're okay. Um, yeah, sorry I don't have a lot of uh, little stories. Um, but oh, fucking step it in! What? No! I mean, sorry. Um, but thank you. That's incredibly fucking kind of you. It's a sixty-dollar game. What do you mean nothing happened? Ring that fucking bell. Well, now I feel really guilty. No, uh, Step of Jen, seriously, thank you. Um, I, as you all know, like, I am a Resident Evil, like, fucking scholar. And the amount of time I spent with the Resi 4 remake, the Cube version as well, I might add, is haunting. Like, here's a random fact for you. In the mercenary mode, the cool jams that play is actually from the Piano 3 soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> and Wolfcraft, thank you. Yeah, that number one spot is yours. <laughs> and Hookshot, we'll see you in a bit. No, Stepagen, that's incredibly kind of you. And it would have been a very long time before I would have been able to pick that up, so fuck it. You all are too good to me! Here I am just waffling on about nonsense. Thank you. Absolutely accept gift. Uh, no, the thing I was going to tell you all about was this thing called Landfall Archives. Uh, in case you somehow needed more video games. Um... And Minty, what up and well, what up and welcome. Numbers, what up and welcome. What well, so numbers? Uh, it's a little bit of a surprise, but I have an interesting game for you all. It's one we've discussed quite a few times, but uh, I've been trying to think like when to show you all. So I think, I think that's the goal for today. But before you all came in, uh, Stepagen just gifted me a fucking copy of. 
fucking Resident Evil 4, so I'm just, I'm kind of beaming here. Oh, yeah, Rain World 2, it's happening. <laughs> too fast, too slug cat. I do like that Crab Champions came out today. A high speed roguelike crab em up. <laughs> I don't know if you all saw that. Oh no, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought there. Um, so, uh, the game that I wanted to mention this isn't what we're playing today but so are you all aware of totally accurate battle simulator um well the team behind that is also the team behind rounds cluster truck um i never even saw square brawl um they also did the night drifting game Well, uh, they released a title, uh, well, technically last night, but today, called Landfall Archives. And it seems less like a meme game and more like an interesting collection of the weird and the strange. And Navalis, it is interesting that Aggro Crab didn't make Crab Champions, but let us remember that while Aggro Crab are the most notable crabs, they are not the kings of crab games. That would go to the uh, Neo Aquarium team. Uh, and Minty, I believe that means that somebody gifted you a sub. Oh, and Alice, I think you mean cluster truck, but yes. Wolfcrab, that's a great one. That, uh, so we're talking about Outcast, like the the sci-fi, the sci-fi weirdness. Because I know there was a semi-re-release, uh, the Outcast 1.1, and I can't remember if they did a was it a, a sequel or a no, that's Jedi Outcast. All right. Oh, and Biggs, what? Oh, and welcome, Bacon. Thank you for the pie glass. Hello, hello. Yeah, Outcast was definitely a game ahead of its time. Uh, and Fencer, which developer is uh, uh, Capola Games again? God. Oh yeah, Fight Crab. Yeah, the team behind Fight Crab also did um, uh, Ace of Seafood, Neo Aquarium, and one other game. Uh, they are fucking legends. Uh, I have streamed Ace of Seafood and Fight Crab. Uh, we haven't done Neo Aquarium, but I think that's because it's a bit unfair. If you never played Virtual On, Neo Aquarium is really fucking hard to understand. Is that Dinobot doing its bloody job? Yes, it is! In fact, Fenter, Deus did an incredible video of uh, the highlights of my Fight Crab day. Let me know if you want the link to that one. Um, so, yeah, so what's going on? Uh, the video of me putting a disco light in the oven by mistake is viral as shit on TikTok. I think it's at like 200,000 views. <laughs> so that's a thing. Um, oh, and I've been beefing up the uh, list of 360 games for the future. Um, uh, so basically I was, I don't remember where it came from memory wise, but today I remembered one title that I'd love to show for you all because it was a one of the few like video games parodying video games that we've had 
not as good as things like um, the Magic Circle and stuff like that. More parodying video games from an outside perspective. But uh, there is a game called Eat Lead. Uh, the Legend of... Sorry, Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard. Uh, which was a wonderful little snapshot in time before Duke Nukem Forever was released when it was a long-running joke. Um, which dev team was it? Just D3 Publishers. Um, and it was a pretty... Like, combat-wise, it was a pretty generic third-person shooter. But narratively, you play, like, not Duke Nukem. Mistake implies an accident. We have it on good authority that you are giggling while putting it in place. <laughs> Whoa! I mean, I wanted to see if it would work. Uh, and Bacon, thank you for the bits. Um, oh shit, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so uh, Eat Lead was kind of a parody of a gajillion different shooty gun bang games, most notably Duke Nukem. And what was fascinating about it was that it dropped during the 360 era. Uh, it had um, Will Arnett and Neil Patrick Harris in the voice cast. And it was... It was a wonderful and weird little snapshot of a time told via, like, parody and humor. Now, it isn't the peak of funny video games, and as a third-person shooter, it's just good. But as a... As a counter to all of the Blorange... Blando Calrissian nonsense that we got during the time, like, it was something special. Because the thing is, like, as soon as you look up Eat Lead The Return of Matt Hazard, it shows you the Bourne Conspiracy video game. The one where they couldn't get the likeness to Matt Damon. And, oh boy, that one was a fucking mess. Uh, let us not forget the Wanted video game. Also, semi Blorange. Uh, which was not good at all. And then we get like the stranglehold and the 360 was a weird time. Oh, we're cool. Sorry, uh, Biggs was saying they decided to start their own DayZ server. Lovely. Um, I see a lot of um, craft and survival zombie games still kind of coming out on Steam. And I'm like, no one solved the end game problem, really. I mean, fuck it, like, Subnautica's the closest we have to, like, a craft and survive with a really good ending. And, I don't know. I understand that games like DayZ aren't meant to be narrative titles. They're meant to be, like, combative scarcity. But the one thing I've noticed is that with those titles, you either get wailed on by randos until you stop playing or you become the powerhouse and then the game becomes trivial and you stop playing like the end of the the curve of experience on a daisy title is always ah fuck it i'm not coming back i would love to see those titles incorporate the idea of like an ending an escape a something i actually feel this, that's a good point um, I know the forest had a very good ending. The green, uh, green hell I haven't, uh, seen the ending of, so don't tell me. God. God. The Blorange era was fucking weird. Oh, sorry. Um, I was just looking at, uh, 360 era titles that I'd love to talk to uh, y'all about at some point. Um, when I say the Blorange era... Um, there was a time where 9 out of 10 covers for video games used blue and orange as the accent covers. Um, I don't know why everybody hit up on the same fucking color scheme at the same time, but yeah. If you, if you line up 100 360 games, you'll start to see the blue and orange real fucking fast. Like, I... Yeah, Earthman Dave, we did see that in cinema as well. Um, if anybody knows what it was that had that kind of cultural impact that caused everyone to go hard on the Blorange, 
I would be fascinated to know, but it definitely came from somewhere. Uh, oh, so Navalis was saying that Conan Exiles also has something of an ending, but it's a uh, collect five MacGuffins and leave. I mean, that's fine. I mean, when you break it down, like, the Subnautica story is essentially just, you know, go from A to B to C until you've uh, heard all the thingies. Like, smash the magical MacGuffin button and then peace. Now, how it's delivered is another thing. It's just... I realised that... For the majority of craft and survival games that get released, there isn't a consideration for how does this end? And yeah. <laughs> Heart your terror. Yeah, rest in pepperoni, sunbeam. Smash the MacGuffin sounds like the objective of the Trojan War. Fuck. Yeah, so, Fencer, um, I don't know if it's the same in other industries, but in video games, the blue and orange color scheme just got, like, shortened to blorange. Uh, it was very AAA. It was very Generosaurus. becoming like a 360 era historian now yeah in terms of color theory blue and orange does work um i keep meaning to get one of the little pins for the rotating color theory stuff because i'm not i'm not an artist by any means and uh, especially when we need to do like kingdoms uh, i do have to fucking bring up the rotating potato uh, color theory chart Oh yeah, Ragnar, let's not forget Soldier Boy looking over his shoulder. Not the um, musician in quotation, Soldier Boy. God. So, okay, so what was it? It was uh, Soldier Guy looking over shoulder. Uh, oh, and it was the, uh, the hero pose. That was another one. It was a lot of the hero pose. Like the knee down, like, okay, let's go. Yeah, buzz cut protagonists looking bland as. Yo, I know the game didn't sell well, but shout out to, excuse me, shout out to Body Count for just being like, you know what? You don't care who the protagonist is. You just like guns. Here's guns. Fucking brink. Uh, yeah, I mean, like friends, we talked a little bit about this with the other games industry friendos last night, and like, I still think there is room to do interesting stuff with shooty gun bangs, but it's like, to know where, to know where we need to go, we must see where we've been, and I'm so, I'm just so done with bland protagonists in Generosaurus environments. Like, especially in the AAA space, it's got to do something fresh and wild. And this is why I keep singing the praises of uh, Deathloop. Protagonist, interesting. Setting, interesting. Gameplay, fucking wild and interesting. Like, that... Deathloop deserves to sell all copies. <laughs> Minty, is this track in Fortnite? I mean, it's epic, so I guess it makes sense, but wild. Oh yeah, huh, that is way outside of my purview. Like when I was working film and telly, we had a we had one of those like stupid expensive uh, grading suites. And a few times some of the peeps who worked it would try and explain to me how Too bad Death Loop won't sell all copies. Suck it up buttercup. <laughs> Thanks for the bits, numbers. Um 
Oh god. Cryo sticks. I actually haven't finished watching the newest Jurassic Park because the setup was so painfully obvious. I just Oh, it just did me a, it did me a damage. Um <laughs> Yeah, bacon! The uh the Yaldum is yours, what will you do with it? Oh yeah, and Clank, like, wholeheartedly agree. I also liked how, like, as the loops progressed, your patience to deal with everything quietly would dissipate. And it kind of created this feeling of like, you know what, I'm just gonna breeze through this area. If I die, I die, I lose nothing. It, I, I rewatched um, the OG Groundhog Day the other day, and it definitely, like Deathloop is one of the games that really does encapsulate that, that midpoint feeling of, essentially like time loop nihilism nothing has an effect nothing sticks so nothing matters so why does it matter if you get detected why does it matter if you don't run around just daka 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 you know i just just inspired um now i have uh, i think i think my list is pretty solid uh, I've been using my little um, wish list to keep track of stuff. Um, I think my little list of 360 games for the moment is solid. But I'd be curious if there's anyone you can think of. So at the moment... Hang on, I'll just fucking show you. Uh, so at the moment, this is what I've got. Uh, I just added Eat Let, The Legend of Matt Hazard. Uh, oh, uh, this one on the PS4. Um, this is... An offshoot of the Disaster series. What is it? Uh, it's like uh, Disaster Report. Uh, it's a Japan-only uh, offshoot of that series where instead of surviving a natural disaster, you survive like a Godzilla attack or like Ultraman fighting a giant squid or like uh, Unit 1 doing battle with a fucking angel. And you're just a regular-ass person in a city trying not to die. Like, how fucking cool is that? Anyway, so I've got... Eat Lead, Legend of Matt Hazard, uh, Fable 3, which we've talked about a lot, Mercenaries 2, which I still think hit upon a beat that very few have managed to really encapsulate in that open world nonsense. Uh, Mind Jack, because Mind Jack. Um, you'll notice the Blorange is already starting to, to come on in. Um, now, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. I would love to show you all because it's not good, but you can see where they tried to be different. It's fucking fascinating. Um, the Metal Gear Solid Collection uh, is there because that's the best way to show you all uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, subsistence. And then Lost Planet. However, Lost Planet, fingers crossed, might be getting at least a, a no Games Windows Live update at some point. So, who knows? Uh, Fencer, I've not put Armored Core on the list because since the announcement of Armored Core 6, the price of, especially for Answer, has gone through the fucking roof. Like, I don't even wanna... I don't even wanna guess at how much that game costs right now. Um, but yeah, those are the 360 titles that I think have some real... something really special about them. Uh, Lagmeister, we actually haven't talked about doing themed Gundams again, yet. Um, we can. Uh, if we do decide to do it, like, I mean, let's, if we decide to do a, like, a, a farewell to E3 Gundam contest, then... That's something we can definitely do, but let's, let's let E3's corpse rest a little bit before we announce. You know, Keeley was posting about Summer Games Fest within like 10 minutes of the death of E3. And, you know, I do have friends who were trying to help with the E3 revival. You know, it's... It's easy to forget that there is like a human cost when it comes to these things. Uh, so, Crystic, so Azura's Wrath is visually fascinating, but as a game to either watch... As a game to watch, it's a lot... And its episodic setup is 
obnoxious beyond belief. I'm so glad as an industry, we knocked that shit right on the fucking head. <laughs> yeah, Fencer, the, uh, the FromSoft fan community finding out that Armored Core is a thing is great, but boy has it turned the price up. <laughs> and Iron Imp, how about them video games? Uh, so, hang on, did Delhi Premonitions come out on the 360, or was that just PS3? Because um, I was talking to Sadlin and... And Sadlin. Uh, to Chorby. And there's a lot of ways to patch up the PC version, so I might be able to get it working from there. Uh, Lagmeister, I've not had the heart to try the new Front Mission remake. Because if it's bad, I won't be kind. Like, okay, we all... We all have certain franchises, certain pieces of art, be it games and movies, where we can't disconnect. Like, we can't be impartial. And Front Mission is one of those for me. Like, uh, I believe the PS1 Front Mission first was the best release so far, which included both campaigns and a whole bunch of, like, quality of life, but also included, like, the original art and good times. Fencer, I couldn't possibly comment because we would never condone piracy on this twitch.televisione. Uh, although there is something to be said about games preservation and how the price of things can wildly change. Uh, it's entirely possible that I still have a copy of Armored Core for Answer in storage back in the UK, but I also don't have the money to get my stuff over, so I could just remember it fondly. Hey, and I if you need recommendations, we're, we're all drowning in good games right now. And Legend, what on? Welcome. Yeah. Well, so Loudmeister, I got worried when I found out that the team doing the Front Mission remake were doing multiple remakes all at once and I was like uh, that kind of sounds like y'all are doing some speedy port in there um, but no sorry I just I'm sure if you've never played Front Mission that the Front Mission 1 remake on the Switch might be a really good game to play if you've not encountered it so Front Mission is what if um, what if Fire Emblem but a political mech game uh, you were a soldier on Hoffman's Island. Is it Hoffman's Island? I believe so. Um, the setup to Front Mission is that, like, you know, during the early 2000s, an island suddenly appeared in the South Pacific. A big chunking island just laden with resources and everything. Boom. Sci-fi featuring The Expanse was just purchased for $18. That is. And whoever that was, seriously, thank you. Uh, I have not checked the Humble Bundles at all this whole last fucking week. Um, but yeah, so front mission, Hoffman's Island just appears. And this creates an international tension situation because for the first time in human history, a new landmass has been discovered. Who owns it? And the back and forth between... Um, so it's like the OCU, which is like the Oceanic... Uh, communities because yeah you have the OCU you have the Fomuricas and then like Super China fuck I forget they're big players now my brain's jello uh, you play an OCU pilot who in the opening of the game like the tutorial level you get set up to take the fall for starting like the, the Hoffman Island incident you and your mech pilots are doing like a standard routine setup where a special ops mech shows up, kills half your team, blows up a factory, and then you take the fall. Um, so it's interesting because it's very politically grounded despite being big robots in the ilk. And then... You pick up again 
as you've basically become like the most budget mercenary for hire because obviously you got fired and discharged. You're like an international pariah for being the one who shot first in an international incident. And so yeah, you're basically, at the beginning of the game, you're just drinking and like doing pit fights with robots. And the story unfurls from there. Uh, Front Mission 3 is fucking wild. Uh, that one is incredibly well written. Like from a, like from a pre, a pre-Twitter political landscape. Uh, Front Mission 2 I actually haven't played. But if I remember correctly, there was two, and then there was the one that was like an RTS. Uh, Front Mission as a series has this habit of doing offshoots. Because it, it kind of came from the era where Square could do no wrong. So they made Front Mission. It sold great in Japan. Then they made Front Mission Gun Hazard. Same kind of setup, but it was a side-scrolling platformer action shooter. <laughs> yeah. Bacon, you can understand now why I get on with Front Mission so up. So much, right? Not the best, but the best you can afford. Um... Yeah, you know what? Give me those. Give me those uh, Tokyo 2 vibes again. I guess I'm on a kicker right now. Yeah, Lagmeister, I also haven't played Front Mission 5 because it was like US only PS2. And I didn't have the green for a, a chipped PS2 back in the day. <laughs> and Greybeard, I wholeheartedly agree. One thing that's been cracking me up is watching the, um, the FromSoft commentators who have just discovered Armored Core and try and say things like, wow, you know, the Armored Core franchise has this incredible, deep story with all these, like, under... No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Armored Core knew what it was about. It focused on that. There isn't environmental storytelling. The story is poorly told and at times really fucking dumb. But the mechs, the mechs and the scale and the, the speed of it all. Ah, oh, brilliant. It's just, it's very funny people trying to apply the same narrative critical lens of, say, like, Bloodborne or Elden Ring to Armored Core, because it doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, hi, Mark. We've, re we've been doing Armored Core lore for years. It's dumb. It's stupid and dumb. Uh, Cryostix, I did know that. I have been on the internet for more than two seconds, but it amuses me greatly to call it dot .television. Because uh, I had a dot .tk account for a thousand years, back when you could get those for, like, pittance. And I forget which particular South Pacific island that was. Yeah. I mean, Greybeard, I do think we'll probably see a much more cohesive story told in Armored Core 6. Um... I, I think they'll have more budget and more resources to tell a more complete story. Uh, but again, like, Armored Core 6 isn't a sequel. Uh, it is a completely different timeline it is a completely different setup. And I think there's been like either t three or four reboots to the Armored Core story. Or uh, is it just. No, it was three. Because we have the OG, then there was uh, four and four answer, which was its own thing. And then five, which was its own thing. Okay, so Greybeard, here's Will's hot take. Um, very, very few games have been able to create a good experience where you get out of your mech as a pilot. Um, like, I would say... Yeah, I'd probably say Metal Warriors is about the only one where it's been fun. Oh, and Blaster Master. Yeah, alright. I'll give you that. But, like... 
if you think about the other titles, you know, Shogu Mobile Armored Division, you don't really get out the mech. That's just two different shooters at the same time. Uh, and Titanfall is a shooty gun bang where you can summon a mech for a limited time. Oh, okay. Thank you, Bacon. But, like, I had a .tk account, like, Jesus, back in, like, a thousand years ago. I thought I was the smartest motherfucker in school because, like, I could have my own domain. Just as long as it's .tk. Oh yeah, and again, I'm not dissing on Titanfall, by the way, friends. It's just, when you think about it, like, Titanfall is a parkour shooter with robots added. I think the success of Apex Legends really does show how they nailed the gun movement feel in that world. Anyway, yeah, I'm just, I'm more thinking, like, examples where getting out of your mech has been fun. Um, because, okay, there's a Gundam game coming out soon. Uh, I think it's Gundam Battle Operations 2. It is a free mech game that's going to be coming out on Steam. It's already out on the PlayStation. And, unfortunately, one of its more obnoxious features is that to repair mechs, you have to get out and fly around. Which means you just get shredded by incoming fire, which means no one takes the time to heal up. Uh, it's also the same for capturing points, which means that no one captures points in capture battles and no one plays it. Because when you compare the breadth and depth of experience in a giant robot to what you can do as a tiny person, unless you build two games simultaneously, you can't... It's very difficult to make it fun. It's very difficult to make it feel good. Um, Front Mission Evolution is something I will never forgive it for being an absolute honking pile of dog shit. Uh, and Left a, is it Left Alive, the less said about that, the better. Ah, uh, now, Chornerus, you're thinking of Elementals, which were a clan-developed power suit designed to pull pilots out of mech seats. Uh, Greybeard, if, I mean, if we're talking money, no question, what I would love to do is, not too dissimilar from Sea of Thieves, but the idea of, like, you build and tweak your mech, then you are dropped into an area with objectives and nonsense to get in, do the job, get out, uh, rather than it being focused of, like, team v team, like, long-form engagements, actually having to, you know, use scout bots and things like that, would be feckin' great. There hasn't been a good proven track record for successful large-scale giant robot games. Hell, Chrome Hounds. Fucking Chrome Hounds. Let's not, let's not forget about Chrome Hounds. Uh, yes, I am bringing up the Chrome Hounds wiki page. <laughs> Chrome Hounds 2. Aww. Ah. Uh, good old FromSoft. And that was designed around large-scale multiplayer, and it did not do good. Oh, Night Valen, I do, uh, I do have a game for you all. We'll probably jump in in about, you know, jump in about like half an hour or so. I'm enjoying the conversation around Mex and the Elf. I mean, shit, you know I love talking about giant robot games. I'm just gonna glare at that idea right now. I'm not saying anything, I'm just glaring. 
again Most to grab my album don't know how I be grabbing the pen I come and stab them again They can't get mad at the kid Just go look at what I did Put back the ground and you're scared It's just the biz Money talks I only listen when I spend Just to live Then I get yeah. and make it all I mean I don't know if Fred's again. still chilling and illing and stuff like that But for those peeps that have read a lot of like MechWarrior books and stories and lore and things like that Like MechWarrior is not at its most fun when you have like Team V Team I'll take my time um, MechWarrior is definitely a title that shines when <laughs> when one must like adapt and change to the environment. Um, I still think MechWarrior 3 is the best in the series gameplay wise because it entirely understands that. Uh, Greybeard, I've also seen Outstanding LEGO Mechs. There's uh, there's a mech system for it, uh, which I always forget the name of. You can download the rule set free and people make incredible builds. Uh, there is also an Autops Legacy Lego kit here somewhere that needs building. Uh, I forgot that uh, the incredible gift we got of like the little mech sets. Uh, so the little Lego sets of like Perun, Autops Legacy, the Frendo, they all need building. And now, at least the, the house is in a state where it's not constant chaos. I think that's a thing that needs to happen. Sounds to make an entire instrumental. I can do that. I have a very talented mouth, and I can do it on my phone right now. And would you like me to do that? And they say no. And I walk away. Oh, so fearless. By my understanding, that's what the elementals were. If Chrome Hounds, sorry, Chrome Hounds. If Mech Assault Two came up with a brand new power armor that does the same thing as elementals but smaller, then so be it. But like that was the whole point of elementals. They were small power armors designed to murder pilots, pull them out, and take over. So, man. <laughs> Aaron, if Aaron was here, Aaron would back me up. Question me on my mech knowledge. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Oh, lordy, lordy. <laughs> oh. Ragnar gets it. Oh, but yeah, um, sorry. I guess the reason why I've got mechs on the brain as well is not just because I was flashing me Gandams, but uh, there aren't many good Gundam games. And considering the size and breadth of that IP, it still blows my mind. The, uh, the SD Gundam Battle Alliance game that dropped recently, which I was very excited for, uh, ended up being uh, absolute hot garbage. Um, while I am looking forward to Gundam Battle Operations, I like it because it's the best of the multiplayer Gundam games that you can currently play. Uh, while we did try... Myself and Caffeine tried out a uh, Gundam Maxi Boost on, and it's alright, but uh, it's not. It's not amazing. Uh, hell, I was even um, trying to pick up what was it. Um, uh, the Gundam Battle Puzzle game the other day, and I forgot how much of a bastard that is. <laughs> yeah, Caffeine, it was fine, but they still haven't found a way to solve, like, the like, thematic versus gameplay, and... When you try and blend together all these different giant robots, like, the balance gets fucky very fast. Uh, like, you'll remember we talked about this a thousand years ago when we did the... Um, 
when we did uh was it endo team that was it but we tried to design a game that was inherently imbalanced like they're essentially doing that but like even with that level of even with that level of concession the gundam games really struggled to okay because like how do you balance a mech that has like you know super whooper super engines that allow it to do super cool kid stuff and then one that uh, i believe by the end of it wasn't it wing zero could see into the future like how how do you balance that and the kind of people that go out of their way to play these titles they know those little details you know uh when we got playing maxi boost on i immediately leapt towards the nightingale being one of my absolute favorite mechs right and when it didn't handle like it was supposed to i was grumpy grumpies Like, sorry, playing as the Nightingale in that game, it was slow, it was chunky, it didn't do the stuff it was meant to, and I'm like, no, 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 this thing's meant to be like a fucking jet fighter, with funnels and all kinds of weird and wild cool shit, you know, it's got a beam tomahawk shield combo, but no, it was all big and chunky and slow, and I'm like, grumpy, grumpy, grumpers. Sorry. <laughs> I tell you what, let's, let's, let's move the conversation topic on before Will starts having an unhinged rant about a thing that no one else cares about. <laughs> What's going down? What? This baby boy is being chaos again. <laughs> And yo. Amos has been a special flavor of chaos for the last like day and change. Oh. Um, I will agree with your lovely selves in chat that um, uh, Hairbrain Scheme's battle tech is very, very good. Um, although I will definitely say that um, MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries moment to moment was so good, but. God, that game needs a lot more love. I mean, I'm hoping that MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries has been selling well enough to get more and more attention. Like, that's that's my sincere hope. Uh, yeah, sorry, friends. Here's me talking your ear off about mechs immediately as you all come. <laughs> Uh, numbers, I'll add that to the list because I've done. Uh, I finally did Steins Gate and um, Erased. I don't know what my obsession is with time loop narratives recently, but fuck it. Oh, and this one was recent and all. Oh. Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, numbers, yeah, no, cheers for the recommendation, friend. down for it anyway friends sorry so what have you all been playing you lovely mother hubbards uh as i said earlier like nick very kindly gifted me terra nil and so i got to have a, a beautiful little session with it last night it is as wonderful as you all think it is uh, and now i've got to decide whether or not uh to inflict um Resident Evil 6 on... Uh, Resident Evil uh, 4 on you all. <laughs> Inflicting Resident Evil 6 on you would be a crime. So that game sucks. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's me being very redacted. Resident Evil 6 was the absolute peak of, like, design by committee meets we're going to try and reverse engineer what we think our audience wants. <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, Dave, we've got to get you out, friend. <laughs> um... oh, 
Ryan has been on Desmos. Don't actually know that one though. Ragnar's playing Stellaris Friends. Uh, jams on a lot of Factorio. Good times, good times. Uh, I will never play Factorio in front of all of you because it'll cause a bunch of you to just have bad times bears. I love Factorio, but I do not play it optimally. It's not... It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> yeah, Almus and Greybeard, you're right. Yeah, inflicting upon you all would be uh, very specific. And... Yeah, maybe we'll do a spooky Bix in exchange. Uh, Dustin's still on Let It Die. I mean, Dustin, you do know the best song on that soundtrack, right? You know the you know the best song, right? It's Let It Die. I know a lot of people say it's Let It Die, but nah, it's Let It Die. And I'll, st I'll die on that fucking hill. <laughs> oh, we cool. Uh, Phyllis is playing some, some Lunark. Look at that. <laughs> Jam, I will never forget because uh, back when I was at Rocketworks we used to play a lot of games like as a big squad and it was feckin' cool it was feckin' cool but I I don't respond well by a group of people being told how I should play a game. Uh, I tend to rebel, uh, as I'm very stubborn. So when everybody started yelling at me, I was like, No, fuck you guys, I'm gonna go make my own shit. So I trundled off and started making my own little base, and it was going rather well. Someone else had a similar experience with the main group and was like, Fuck it, I'm gonna go join Will. And I will, for as long as I still draw breath, never forget the noise they made when they saw what I had put together. and. It was this kind of this like strangled squeak of confusion, followed by how? Then they proceeded to ask me, Will, do you mind if I remake this? And I'm like, I don't mind it. <laughs> if it makes you feel better. Whoa. I mean, Dustin, it's okay to be wrong loudly. <laughs> Actually, okay, I should explain this joke because we do have a lot of new people. So. Um, if you haven't seen it, Let It Die is a fascinating free-to-play game, which I think was made by Grasshopper. Um, aesthetically, it's incredible. It's a bit confusing gameplay-wise because it does rely on you dying a few times to progress. But the monetization is all about like bringing your character back and or having a better elevator. However... Let It Die was just a fascinating little passion project. Originally a PS4 exclusive, but it was released on PC, so you can play it now. And what is one of my favorite facts about this is that the entire soundtrack to Let It Die is all originally composed songs by Japanese artists. Uh, and there's a combination of like all sorts of metal and EDM and great nonsense. However, here's the hook. Every song was commissioned and called Let It Die. So every song, the Let It Die soundtrack is called Let It Die. And let me tell you, they slap. Like, God, we binged that soundtrack so many times. But then it led to this, like, long running joke back in the day of, like, especially like me and Baron arguing about which was the best song from Let It Die. <laughs> and Fred! Wow, and welcome! Uh, I was, uh, well, I was trying to, like, ninja summon you earlier. Because I was talking about Battletech and how, especially from, like, the, the novels and stories. Uh, I mean, numbers. I mean, I'm not saying that Let It Die doesn't have good parts about it, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Fred, I was talking about Battletech earlier and how like the really good stories about Battletech aren't, you know, Lance to be Lance equal squad battles, but like clever long duels or drawn out engagements or these like like actual war battles with people like repairing and refitting. Like those are the good stories. Because we were talking about robots again. Get in 
trouble do the hustle everybody do the hustle you gotta understand i wish i could live like you but i can't be a man Dropping intuition just understand to those damn J falcons fucking yo it's 304 and partner why oh why are you calling me for i thought i was understood i'm so good on that club shit don't care how the club's lit i just make the club hits spitting on the introverted tip flex that i don't return huh. flex, and actually I so i didn't i didn't know that it, it is different it is like but uh that makes a lot of sense in soviet russia song slaps you <laughs> Oh, sorry, where are my fucking manners? Uh, numbers. Thank you for the bits. I hope you're doing good. Uh, I hope the, uh, the baseball season is treating you well. Um, but no, I'm still kind of mildly obsessed with giant robot games because I feel that there is still a lot unsaid and undone. Here's the thing. When FromSoft announced they were going back to Armored Core, everyone immediately went, oh shit, they're going to do open world like Elden Ring but giant robots. And you know what? Like, the more I've mulled on that the more kind of excited I am for it. Now, like, I do understand why they're doing a traditional armor call. One, they have the world's army. They have everyone's uh, attention now, so whatever they release is going to get a ton of eyeballs. That's brilliant. And, like, Armored Core as a franchise was always about the experience, and oh boy, was that experience good. And it was always... Armored Core has always been about finding your niche or, like, hyper-specialization. So in one match, you might need to focus on, like, you know, speed and flight. On another, you just need to be a stonking great big behemoth. Or tweaking your creation to fit different su uh, situations. But the idea of trying to build something for an open world where it has to be able to handle a multitude of different scenarios is something I find very interesting. Like, I have no fucking clue how I'd get it working, but... One of my favorite giant robot games is Heavy Gear 2. Okay, man, because the go. worlds on, were massive. And while you didn't have like the repair features of other titles, you had to create something that could handle a multitude of situations. So like, laser weapons were obviously a lot weaker than like direct fire, but the lack of munitions meant you had a reliable fallback, you know? Missiles were great, but you could burn through ammo like popcorn. But if you were dealing with stationary targets, mortars were incredibly powerful, and, and so on and so forth. Oh yeah, plus, yeah, Iron Imp. The roller skates were great. Like, screaming across these, like, these huge open planes. Uh, and Ragnar, the newer builds have been better, but yeah, the old Armored Core kits... I forget which company made them, but they're not as good as the, the Bandai standard. But then again, like, a lot of the old Bandai Namco Gundam kits are garbage. Like, I love them. I love them, but... Oh. Who was it? It was the uh, Master Gundam from G Gundam. I put that together a while ago, and I was so ready to scream at it. But that's another story. No doubt some of the expressions... Uh, but yeah, I, I think Heavy Gear's in, like, licensing hell right now. Because it was... I forget. Okay, who developed it? Sorry. Because it was published by Activision. Oh shit, no, it was developed by Activision in-house. Well, yes. And I don't know what happened to Dream Pod 9, so... Oh, Jesus! Okay, sorry, um... So, Heavy Gear 2 was 
to Heavy Gear 2 was made and released in 13 months. 1 3. They built a new game engine for it? Fuck me running! Fuck me running. Sorry, I'm just uh, I'm just sitting here stunned looking at old stuff. Uh, if you've never heard of DreamPod 9, by the way, so DreamPod 9 was a company based out of Montreal, which were the closest to creating a heavy gear, a uh, heavy gear, the closest to creating a BattleTech competitor back in the day. Um, so, whilst BattleTech was based on huge, heavy, weighty giant robots, um, heavy gear was based more around like the. Um, like assault suits, V Toms, uh, what were they called? The the bound dogs or what have you. The the smaller, shorter, like person in the chest kind of like mechs, like almost slightly more tactical, slightly faster. And for a while, they were doing very good. Had a bunch of games. There was a TV show. It was doing all right, but it yeah. I think they still exist in some capacity, but it hasn't been going well. Uh, apparently they stopped operating in 2018. Uh, they had five Kickstarter, there uh, six Kickstarters of which five were successful. Uh, Fred, it Heavy Gear the Animated Series did not have enhanced imaging. Also, it was bad. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to pay for over this. I'm a giant robot fan. I'm like, yeah, did not go well. All right, so we're coming up on the hour, friends. So, as I said, I have been saving this particular game for you all for some time, and I really wanted to share with you all. Know. You know how there's those games we keep talking about, we keep coming back to? I think this is one of those. Uh, so if any of you need to go quickly nip to Lou, uh, grab a cup of tea or what have you, we'll be getting into it in just a second. Uh, actually, I am going to nip to Lou because I was stupid and was actually healthy, like drinking water like a dingleberry. Um, but yeah, I have, a, I have a good Saturday forest planned and... When we talk about the art and craft of video games, I think this is one specifically that that deserves a day, you know what I mean? But, I right, hold that thought. If you need to get tea, if you need to get snacks... Um, oh no, Crux, I had coffee earlier. It's just I then switched to having healthy water. Um, so yeah, we're going to be jumping into that in seven minutes. So yeah, if you want to get a cup of tea, if you want to go pet your, your cats and say hi to your nearest and dearest, now is the time. I'll be back with you all in just a second.
Hello, hello. Okay. Okay. So I guess we'll give it a couple of seconds because I did say we'd kick off the four. Friends, I do want to say, and I know I say this a lot, but like, thank you for letting me rant and ramble about giant robot stuff. I've probably told you all about Heavy Gear 2 about a thousand times, but I mean, it was a game that shaped me as a person, and it definitely shaped my understanding of like, what you could do with a video game. The Zero G sections were incredible, but obnoxious and nauseating. I mean, shit, they did the, the Ender's game like 3D arena battles be like before I saw them in any other title. Good times, good times. But yeah, no, I end up thinking about them. Uh, I end up thinking about that game a lot, a lot. And... Red Bunny Dragon Zone Enders is a good mech game. Um, the second one is definitely a much better experience. And I, I know we've talked about this before, but it is worth remembering that, like, there wouldn't have been a sequel without Metal Gear Solid 2's demo, you know what I mean? That was the smartest play, like, Konami has ever done. Here's a game that's not going to sell, but what if it's the only way you can get access to the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo? Like, is it, is that evil? Yes. Does it work? Very yes. Alright, as we're coming up to four o'clock, let's get this going. Rumbling Mondays. That could be a good one. Though, uh, the chances of me just exploding and expiring from uh, streaming six days a week could be a bit much. Oh. Okay, I think this is working. I think this is working. I think, I think we go time. Right. Oh, no. Yes, I know. No, that's not working. That is very loud. I am sorry. Uh, Alright, friends. As I've said, sometimes it's important that we take a beat and a breath and truly experience the art house cinema that video games brings to bear. with customizable weapon attachments. So good. Oh, 
Dwayne Hicks, TQ4048215E9. Distress. My unit has suffered immense casualties on LV426. I couldn't keep a straight face, I'm sorry. Assistance aboard the USS Sulaco. <laughs> of the survivors, myself, two human females, one of which is a child, and a damaged synthetic. Consider all Colonial Marines dispatched to LV426 to be I, KIA. It was my turn. No wombs. No fuckery. It was my turn to be a terror this year. Sega presents. Yeah, I was there the day the Wums took Seattle. I was there for Doom Be Upon Thee. Rise and shine, Marines. This isn't a drill, and you aren't in Kansas anymore. Oh, Edwin, this is unpatched. This is On just your feet, cruel. Marines. For any new recruits, I'm Captain Cruz, and you are my crew on the USS Sephora. We responded to a distress call sent out 17 weeks ago from the USS Sulaco. Rhino 23 went in first and encountered heavy resistance. You were the last of the battalion to get popped out of cryo. So I don't want to hear any bitching because we let you lugheads sleep in late. Get combat ready, and I'll see you in the hangar in 20 mics. Name and rank? Corporal Christopher Winter, 118th Battalion aboard the USS Sephora. I'll, I'll tell you in a second, Numbers. I don't want to interrupt this uh, incredible cutscene of storytelling. Yeah, I mean, it is art. <laughs> As you are, I remind right all that a shared pain is lessened, therefore, feeling, we'll carry I'm on. Feeling good, Captain. But I'm worried about <laughs> oh, two can't be bad. That's good, because I'm sending you in to catch up with Rhino 2-1. We're trying to get the Sulaco flight recorder. Yeah, can't go so can <laughs> shit, Sir, what happened in there? I'm <laughs> actually crying. <laughs> Attention, chicks and dicks of the USS Sephora. As of right this second, Rhino 21 and Rhino 23 are fighting to get a hold of the situation we're in. We don't leave Marines behind. Over the next two hours, we're going to send a series of dropships over to aid with Kazavak on the USS Sulaco. Sir, the Sulaco was reported last seen over Fury 161. How is it back over this planet? Lieutenant Reed, thanks for the interruption. We don't know how that boat got back here. Right now, we're worried about what's killing our Marines in there. This is a liquid situation. Information to follow as it comes online. Yeah, now, Edwin, like, joking Good aside, like, James Warner's score does a great job. And the, like, the technical and mechanical design of Aliens Listen up. shines through. What I need right now is information. No heroics, no bullshit. I need you to be my eyes in there. We designed you to be the most generic hero that ever has been in a video game. Roger that. Tell Rhino 2-1 I'm en route to their location. Oh god! <laughs> Change to the, the super whooper. Um, <laughs> we, we do not have to do a full-on play of this. I just... Oh, friends. Now, the reason I was talking about mechs so much is it was the only way I could keep a straight face. I, I was going to try and deadpan play through this and be like, no, this is... This is, uh, this is an experience. Um, so, friends, this is Aliens Colonial Marines. Um, this is infamous in video game circles um now i can't talk about stuff and things from behind the scenes uh what i can tell you is that um the reception to this title was so negative um that uh, there was talk of a class action <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, wait, I have to keep playing. Oh, oh, oh no. What have I done? Oh, no. V-Sync absolutely on. And then just... <laughs> <laughs> I did this to me. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself. Get the uh, get the subtitles going. You wouldn't wanna wanna miss this one. Like, what am I packing here? I guess this is like a combination. <laughs> Sniper flamethrower thing? Like, okay. God. Uh, <laughs> Edwin and Gilmar and Crux, thank you. Edwin says we can stop anytime I want. Uh, so Hans Wolf says, what is this heresy? <laughs> Happy April, friend. Happy April. Oh. Alright, there's me flamethrower. There's me shooty gun bang. <laughs> Krok says, this is your fault, Will. You made this sandwich. Oh, I did. I did. Now, the thing is... You can't understand how much this was a triple A. And we have a hype train for it. Let's go. I guess we do. All right, Marines. You want a hype train forever? Hang on. Let me let me bring it in. <laughs> let me bring it in close. Oh, why did I do this? Why do you lot put up with me? You made your April bed. Now lie in it. Now April lie in it. I did this to me. I did this to me. Um, but yeah, before we continue, the the thing that I can talk about is that Aliens Colonial Marines had one of the biggest like hype campaigns of an Aliens games to date, uh, with likenesses and characters from the originals. And at one point, it was declared that this was a canonical, canonical sequel to Aliens. Um, and all I can say is that it was very strange because, like, this was when Sega uh, had the Aliens video games license. So Gearbox was working on Colonial Marines, which was meant to be a sequel to Aliens. CA was working on Alien Isolation, which was meant to be a sequel to Alien. Now, we played Alien Isolation, you know how good that is. This? The only good bug is a bug ship to customers. <laughs> I can't make that joke. Now, Avrik, I cannot comment in any way, shape, or form on that. Um, that's where... That's where we start getting into to very real territory. Now, it is worth noting that uh, Borderlands was a brand new IP and survived a complete rework from halfway through development. Yeah, this... You all shouldn't be starting a train for this. I did this to us. <laughs> so... I did this to us. Oh, 
Oh, piss! What? <laughs> Why are you on the outside? That's bad. What just happened in there? Raider six five, are you in the area? That lagmeister, did you play Spice, Alien? Uh, did you play Alien uh, Infestation on the DS? The umbilical's venting Atmo into the black. Looks dicey, sir. And yes, that is actually Raider, I need grown up words. You have 20 minutes before a total collapse. Shut it down. Where you heard the lady? Get to the other side and we're shutting it down. Continuing on to the Sulaco. Winter out. Uh, also, I haven't had the chance to play the, um... Several injured over here. Need a corpsman right away for the down Marines from Rhino 2 1. Negative 2 1. That explosion jacked the airlock on our end. We cannot use the umbilical without risking more lives. Sit tight and stabilize our Marines. 2 1, what is the status of 2 3? That guy's super dead, sir. Like, super dead. This mess as well. Pull up your motion tracker. Tell me what you see. Got you two here. And I'm reading 2-3 to the south. Beyond the hangar, engineering perhaps. They moving? No. Wait. I got an unidentified site. I believe Something so, numbers. I believe so. Damn it. Sephora actual. It sounds like 2-3 are holding position. Boy, they're down. We're reading unidentified movement in their area. It could be under attack. I'm heading into rendezvous with two three. That guy was already super dead. I said about heroics, kid. Actual out. Maybe maybe help these two guys. Um, Iron Imp. While there isn't a lot that I can comment on, like the Gearbox as a studio have put out a large number of incredibly good games. Every every. <laughs> They're just trying to reach you about your extended car warranty. Oh yeah, that's definitely it. Hang on, where's my motion tracker? I forget how I bring it up. There we go. Um, what I will say is that, um, love him or loathe him, uh, there is a gentleman, uh, Joe Vasquez, aka Angry Joe, that did a, uh, a breakdown Sir, of this video, which is... Half an unidentified synthetic splattered across the deck in here. Which half? Well, he ain't saying much. Then find me a half it does. <laughs> Actual out. Now, I believe this is meant to be... One of... Um, this is meant to be the hangar from the Sulaco from uh, the end of Aliens, I believe. God, man, this bloom's killing me. Griff, why in hell would you give somebody CPR for a bullet wound in the head? That doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> I mean... I don't know what to tell you, son. That guy is super dead. Like, he is not- he is not moving. I- I- he's been very exploded. CPR perhaps may be a little late. Um... Yeah, no, so this is- I think this is meant to be the hanger from, uh, The End of Aliens. Yeah, I mean, I know, uh, opposing force was fucking brilliant. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like, opposing force, uh, their second, uh, sorry, the first of the Half-Life add-on packs was done by a very, very early proto gearbox. In fact, there's a little meme uh, in one of the areas where you have to turn on the valve and the gearbox to get a thing running to move forward. Uh, so, Sir Hans Wolf, what can I say? Um... When this launched, things got very litigious very quickly. Um, because of the manner in which Colonial Marines was advertised, there was discussion of class action lawsuits and things like that. And so it's not so much as a I'm still under NDA, it's that that sphere of things is... 
that sphere of things is something that one does not fuck with. Kind of like the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, and I did not deserve that train for that nonsense, but thank you. So, I mean, it's one of the reasons why there's still not a lot of stories around this is because shit got litigious. And, you know, you can't tell old stories when there's the possibility of actually... Like Post-train snipe. Oh, well played! Well, I mean, and Wolfgrave, thank you. I do not deserve that. you've done it. The number one spot is yours. What will you do with this power? Although I think Wolfcrad has uh, authority in this situation. Oh yeah, sorry. And friends, thank you for answering. Yeah, so... Ah, the Sulaco. It's just fine. Coming out of the goddamn walls! Jesus, no. What if, instead of this, we just played Halo today? <laughs> uh, so numbers, I don't have uh, infinite installed, unfortunately. But what I will say is that we are going to do a Halo Infinite um, playthrough at some point. Yeah, no, uh, uh, actually no, C Triple Two's right. Didn't you you'll see this is this is the Halos. With Mr. The Halo. Oh, someone's about to have a bad time. Also, someone set up a camera to record this? Oh my god. Get me the hell out of here. Cut down keys. <laughs> Nothing bad happens the end. Oh god. Shoot that thing! What's up, mate? The fuck are you? They're here. Oh, God! Don't worry, friends. I can wrestle him away with my, my meaty man arms. Thank you for... Thank you for waiting there. Thank you for waiting there, little buddy. Ragnar, I can believe that. Uh, also, that there was, uh, in the director's cut, the eggs were originally an alternate thing that could happen to people. Come on. Come on. Zipporah Axel, this is Winter. I've located keys from Rhino 2-3. There's some bodies down here, but some are missing. There are one or two Marines missing from Rhino 2-3. Gone. Sit tight. I got you, buddy. We're gonna regroup what's left. Get him back to the hangar and the rest of 2 1. Do not engage. This is keys from 2 3, sir. Our mission was to recover the flight data from the Salaka. Son, 
I gave you that mission and it's over. <laughs> Soon I gave you that mission. No one this. The flight recorder can get us that with oh, all due respect. Question. Sir, my respect. squad means you shut your goddamn mouth and follow <laughs> yours. Actual out. Uh, has anyone played the uh, the four-person co-op Aliens title? Because I've been told it's good. O'Neill, you still there? Damn. Are you guys on the way back? No. You gotta buy us ten minutes to grab the flight wreck. Our Marines aren't gonna die for uh, numbers, uh, you are correct. Although, uh, the one that Sigourney Weaver took out with the power loader was the Big Mama. But yes, I did just hold a xenomorph in the same way that one would hold a very, very overexcited puppy. And then kind of push it away. Uh, so Ragnar did try Fire Team Elite. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear it's good. Um, You've got five to get that recorder and get back here. Keep an eye out for Bella Keys. Urata Ashes Marine. The other thing, friendos, is that... Thanks, uh, numbers. In this, Amos is more effective than the Xenomorphs. But that's another story. Something's down here with us! Oh my oh, god! Okay. Contact! Contact! Here we go! <laughs> Challenge complete! Spray and pray! Challenge get rank up five. Shotgun unlocked. The room with the flame recorder is on the top of the stairs. I see it. Monster! Holy shit! Mother of a monster kill! I will say, friends, though, there's a part of me that kind of wants to try something like... Reset the clock! Like... Um, excuse me, is that a tactic? Is that a shotgun with an underslung shotgun? What am I looking at here? Is caffeine still here? Caffeine! Caffeine, what if the pump on my shotgun was also another shotgun? It's the shot shotgun! <laughs> and yeah, Edwin, yeah, the James Horner score is, is spot on. But the thing is, the experience doesn't match the intensity of the score. Like, this is what I would call, like, unearned... Uh, an unearned experience, you know? Ooh, butt stock. Oh, it's an extended magazine. Oh, I can change my booty to a shooter. Oh, love to see it. Love to see it. You've completed a challenge. Each one gets you rewards and ranks. No, so what I was about to say was, like, I'd almost like to try and do something like, um... With movies with Mikey, they have... Well, I should say, Film Joy. Uh, they have a show called Deep Dive, where they make a bunch of people sit in a room and watch a terrible movie. However, the goal is they have to find something to love. And so... Maybe we should consider... Maybe we should treat this like that. Because, like, okay, so what is this doing so far that is good? The score, brilliant. The technical design feels spot on. Um, any, any other ideas? In, uh... Sealing the room! Grab the flight rack! The central console! Get the flight recorder! What's up, kids? Setting. 
Uh, Lost Flower saying, like, the power fantasy out of place with decent. It does have that, like... Sorry, I'll keep pausing it because he's yelling nonsense at me. The one thing that... I, I, you don't need me to tell you this. Aliens did something very, very interesting, which was take the the kind of the Vietnam power fantasy and suppose it into a place where the Marines could be the goodies. Um... You know, it's all it's always fascinating when you go back and look at like the the colonial marines being a diverse cast of different individuals. You know, it wasn't it was not super duper whitewashed. And then transposing that experience here like at least the the power fantasy of it, do you know what I mean? Uh Alanis, that's a good point. The flow is there. We're not getting like, lost and confused. The high fives for the bedroom. Get your ass back here. There's no way the flight wreck didn't tape the. Sorry, but I do need to just uh, pick up on that line. Save the high fives for the bedroom. Um, for those of you with partners, I, I I think that's the the main goal of every bedroom uh, region is high fives. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Assholes that did it to the Salako. If we make it back with this thing. Uh, Ragnar, you are entirely correct. It was the shelled Spass 12 shotgun with a uh, Remington uh, guts and the um, the actual functioning mechanics of the pulse rifle is a Tommy gun. Deconstructed, certainly, but yeah. <laughs> Number says, does the high five come after the button mashing? Uh, heaven will be mine. I still got to put those, pa those patches on my jacket. <laughs> Who knows what we'll find out? Uh, as I said, I take it that. Uh... <coughs> Don't stand in the fire then, Quid. Oh! Oh, that's what the underslung does. One thing this does very well is having the um, the motion tracker on quick draw. Yep. Welcome to Blorange! Secure left flank. That's right, you dickhead! This is why we use port and starboard. No! Your other left! Winner, you got eyes on the target? Me, I can't see anything for the fucking bloom! Oh god! Don't worry, friends. I can pistol whip the aliens. We're okay. <laughs> Sup, nerd. Sorry, don't worry, friends. The acid's just a little spicy today. And your white wolf grad, this game is very proud of its blue. I now have an achievement. They're coming out of the goddamn walls. Yeah, welcome to Fruit of the Blue. On the dropship! Watch this! We're Keys, wait! Your damn mind! Get to the umbilical! Hello, Amos. What do you, you want to come see a game? The umbilical is unstable, but we can't wait for a bird to evacuate. We're gonna go through it anyway. Explosion locked the door. It won't open without authorization. Yeah, because you blew shit up, you great big numpty. Bypass on the goddamn door, Keith. Weapons hot. I'm on it. I'm on it. Running a bypass. Get some, get some, get some! Only good bugs and dead bug! Oh, that 
did not work. That did not work. <laughs> Tasty, welcome to Aliens Colonial Marines. Happy April 1st. On the drop ship. Watch this. No, don't Please, watch wait. this. Are you out of your damn mind? Get to the umbilical. Chronicle Dingleberry. I can't go back! God. Fucking invisible wall. The umbilical is unstable, but we can't wait for a bird to evacuate. We're gonna go through it anyway. Oh, so Ragnar, you probably know this one, but uh, the rig holding up the um, the, uh, the smart gun is just a regular um, cameraman's rig for filming. Um, the rig and the uh, weapons were so heavy, they had to duct tape the actors into the fucking uh, harnesses. is a couple more seconds. Yeah, I got the old Halo win. <laughs> We're not gonna make it. We're not gonna make it! Ah. Edwin, thank you for the bits and for the philosophical question. Who is the greater fool? The one playing alien colonial marines or the one watching him play aliens? Colonial marines. God. What if I can't get past this part? What if this is where our adventure ends? On the drop ship! Watch this! Grenade out! I Please. don't wanna! You're a big dork and you shouldn't be allowed grenades. Get to the umbilical! This might be where we end! Try and keep my budget teammates alive. The umbilical is unstable, but we can't wait for a bird to evacuate. We're gonna go through it anyway. <laughs> Jam, you're right. Everyone pays. One way or another. Longest 30 seconds of my fucking life. You should be fine. Couple more seconds. Everything's fine. It's alright, they're just standing in the club. It's great. Uh, so Hamsonator says when they had to review this game back in the day, their second weapon bugged and they had to do the entire game with the fucking pistol. On the drop ship! Watch this! Grenade out! Keys, wait! Are you out of your damn mind? Get to the umbilical! Yeah, suffice it to say, uh, to say this game had a rocky launch is... I wouldn't say charitable. This, this went through a lot. <laughs> I'm on it, I'm on it! 
Uh, uh, Tasty, I don't know if it eats our special ammo, but it definitely doesn't... It's not giving us health back. Ragnar is actually correct that yes, the uh, the smart gun is an old uh, heavy German machine gun, but with a uh, Yamaha motorcycle handle. The, the crank handle at the back. Just, yeah. Keys, wait. Are you out of your damn mind? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I could be doing anything today. I could be anyone. I did this to me. I did this to me. Get to the umbilical! <sighs> like, what does it say about me if I can't get us past this one fucking section? Gotta go through it anyway! Explosion lock the door! It won't open without authorization! Just give me enough time to run a bypass on the goddamn door, Keith! Weapon's hot! I'm on it, I'm on it! Running a bypass! Everyone who is not me is dead. How do you miss? Your gun literally aims for you. <laughs> Nick! <laughs> Two, one, I tried to keep a straight face starting this off earlier on, but yeah. I, know, I will say no. Um, aside from its excessive use of bloom constantly, it does actually look a lot better than. Oh no! Yes, that guy did just do a pull lift uh, in a decompression vacuum. Come on, reach! We lost the flight wreck. Keys. Keys had the recorder on him. It was all for nothing. Well, we're not dead. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> 
So yeah, Nick, how are you doing? Also, I did want to say. Sephora actual. Two. Yeah, I'll pause this for a second. I did want to say also thank you again for for Terra Nil. I played the absolute shit out of it last night. Oh, okay. I played it for a couple of hours, but God, it was so peaceful. I did end up swearing at a lot of bears last night because the bears were being incredibly picky. They wanted elevated terrain, and they wanted forest, and they wanted honey. Like, God. Boy, can you read me? What just happened in the umbilical? Needy ass bears. Actual, I got solid copy. We lost keys. Pretty sure something exploded from the chest. Something. With you. Yes, sir. Any thoughts on the exploding chest issue? All of our Cheyenne class birds en route to provide Kazavak and ground support. That's almost 80 Marines en route, and we gotta get them somewhere to land. The hangar's out of commission, but we got room in the cargo base. Understood. We are heading to the cargo bay. Two one out. Something's not right. Follow me. Something's not right in an aliens game? Hmm. Sounds fishy. Um, but yeah, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy April 1st! Welcome to the art house experience that is Aliens, Colonial Marines. Now, if we actually wanted to get into the paint on this one, this is a really good example of trying to emulate things purely on a visual or aesthetic level. Um, now, admittedly, Alien Isolation had a very different mission statement, you know? Alien Isolation was a horror game first and foremost. This is an action game. Isolation was about the Xenomorph being this unstoppable, unkillable monster. This is about, Oorah! Marines in space! Get some, get some, get some! Only good bugs are dead bug! And so on and so forth. So they're going for very different things, but... The 360-era aesthetic of this kind of shooter twinned with the thematics they have they don't blend like the fact that there can be seven uh, six three or four xenomorphs around you and you kind of push them away with the butt of your gun it doesn't fit the fact that you can jam a shotgun in an alien's chest set it off and then it then you're like oh no the spicy water flick flick you know what i mean this is to video games what the uh the the never published aliens cartoon was to telly, you know what I mean? Alright, so what have we got? Sephora Actual, we're sending back a live feed. There's no way this is colonial marine tech. It's got where you marking, sir. Oh shit. What? Everything is time stamped after we received the distress signal from uh, uh what's his name? Corporal Hicks. Actual, this is 2-1. What do you make of this? Sir, is there someone else on this ship? I have Bishop sending a signal to weigh you. We ain't got time to sit around and play Sherlock. Get back to the cargo bay. Both of you, out. My God, we are so screwed. Yeah, so this stuff right here... So like... far, Actual, this is Bella from Rhino 2-3. Do you read? Loud and clear, 2-3. What's your status? Woke up gagging on a creature like a spider it wrapped around my face it's dead sir i got separated from my squad any news from the rest of my guys the rest of two three is presumed dead i'm sorry kid remnants of rondo two one are on their way to the cargo bay can you get to the cargo bay two three garnett keys i can't even think right now actual i'm not sure how to get there sir you're the last of rhino two three do your best. Get back here alive. Actual out. Yeah, super dead. Super dead. Oh. Neil, what's wrong? It sounded like Bella. She. <clears throat> we had a thing, okay? What kind of thing? A sex thing. Back it up, Boy Scout. Christ. Oh, Alnus, you're right. This might be part of the um, the E3 demo vertical slice. Um, oh yeah, and so uh, one of the other things about like the the juxtaposition of like experience and cinematics is that in a movie you can have the characters not know, right? So, for example. 
I'm trying to think of a good example throughout the Aliens franchise, but there have been multiple instances where the characters don't know what a face hugger is. They don't know its implications. We, as the viewer, do. So at that point, the characters aren't our POV. We're kind of watching them all go through this, and we know they're in trouble. In a video game, we have agency in the space. So our character being like, oh boy, you woke up with like a spider thing on your face? Hmm. I'm sure it's fine. No worries. Click. We as the player know that that's a bad time. So it means that when things happen because of it, it doesn't quite hit as well. Like the guy blowing himself up in the umbilical cord. Like, fuck you, buddy. We knew that was going to happen, but we didn't know you were going to explode yourself on the way. Uh, so Fencer, this is Aliens Colonial Marines. This is infamous. Oh, yeah, and numbers. Um, I believe Ragnar was mentioning that earlier, but yeah, um, the the eggs were initially just one slit down the middle to be evocative of uh, yeah. Oh my god! No, uh, sorry, completely unrelated. Look, I'm just gonna put the fucking picture in. Discord. I just had a freak out moment. Because, Numbers, I was reading your um, comment and I was trying to find a, a nice way to say that, you know, Geiger initially designed the eggs to look like vaginas! Because, you know, Geiger's art is very evocative of genitalia. That's not a sharp take. So I was reading your comment. I was like, how can I say this politely and cleverly? And then I look down and I see this on my fucking keyboard. Please forgive the fact that I need to wash the screen on my keyboard. I'll put this in uh, Discord if you want to see. Uh, so there's General. Oh, I see Minty posting the ones. Uh, and uh, thank you, Quasi, for posting sharks. My keyboard is reacting to the game. I I'll just throw it in General, Hans. My keyboard is reacting to the fucking game. Okay, now we're good, we're good. Yeah, so um, the keyboard I use is one of the old uh, Logitech ones with a built-in screen. Um, it was given to me when Unit 1 was made, and it's really useful because usually it shows me CPU and graphics usage so I can tell if the indie game is buggered or if we're suffering technical problems or what have you. But this actually has the old, like, Aliens plug-in stuff. Anyway, let's... Let's have a little trundle through this, because I do believe that peeps were right, that this is from the vertical slice. Uh, sorry, if you're not familiar with the term, a vertical slice is kind of like a demo that's only ever shown to like publishers and press in controlled environments, as opposed to a demo which is just shared to everybody to play. Um, vertical slices are usually made to look spiffy and shiny, either to secure money or good press. Um, everybody does it. This isn't uh, me leveling criticism. So a demo for corporate's not a bad way of putting it, but it's like, if we were going to do a press event and we wanted them to either see the game running live or perhaps play it, we'd do it in a controlled environment. Um, we take a part of the game uh, that best shows off all the different experiences together. 
Uh, supposedly, the vertical slice for the XCOM shooter is still out there, and I know a few people have had the chance to play it. And uh, now, the other thing that this does well is how the um, how the motion tracker is displayed to you. The thing I would say it does poorly is that the motion tracker doesn't actually convey a lot of useful info. Uh, for those of you who played AVP 2000, that did a wonderful thing where you could either have night vision or you could have your motion tracker, but not both. <laughs> Mateus says, and at the end of every vertical slice, there's a Kurosawa blood spray. Um, oh, Nick also makes a good point that your vertical slice is also the thing you'll show friends after you fail to get funding. You know, you'll be drinking one light and you'll be like, oh shit, remember when we made that thing? You'll want to see the vertical slice of that? Ah, just sad. Fence was saying, is this the Colonial Marines vertical slice? So far as I remember, yes. Alright, I'll stop pissing about. Otherwise we'll be here for a bloody day. Oh, you just closed the door behind me! We need to reach the top of the gravity well! That'll put us right next to the cargo bay! We're crawling through the vents! I was just mentioning that uh, Angry Joe did a video on release that whilst Joe Vasca's style can be very polarizing, <laughs> uh, he did actually do a breakdown of like the assets ahead of time. Like the difference between like the assets that were put out as part of the marketing campaign. We need to reach the top of the versus, um, put us right next to the cargo bay. Versus what was actually released at launch. Uh, pause for a second. Um. Oh, Lagmeister. The Noiter blood approach to something like this would be fucking wild. Whether or not it would be fun, I don't know, but it would certainly be entertaining. Ooh, shiny gold. That's exactly what the shoddy needed. <sighs> well, so, uh, a cult game dev... Oh, Nick. Um, there's a lot that, like, I can't talk about. Um, especially when it comes to, like, the, the speculation around this title and how... 
and what may or may not have happened on its release and things like that. But it's definitely interesting, you know what I mean? Also, I don't know how to change weapons or what have you. Yeah, now I have a golden gun. Much better. Where the fuck is going? Um, and Angel Kalino, I'm sorry you're having a hard time sleeping. Uh, hopefully it gets better. No, that's where we came from. I turned around because I wasn't paying attention. Shot ammo, but right. Lurking son of a bitch! Oh, back off. Let's do less of that. <laughs> So, um, Nick, you all can speculate to your heart's content about stuff around the financing of this game and pitchman quotes and things like that. Because I worked at a Sega-owned studio whilst this was made, I have to be very careful. That's that's why I'm being um, uh, uh, that's why I'm being avoidy. Don't worry, friends. It's a little bit of the spicy water. The uh, acid made bad by. And Ozymandias. It's just the fact that you can pistol whip a xenomorph. We talked about this a lot with like ABP 2000, as it's now known. How, like, the aliens are absolutely the thing to be afraid of. When you get to play as them, you are absolutely the monster. Well, Aiden, I'm glad you're finally playing Half-Life 2, but uh, yeah, you do need to work on your game's literacy. <laughs> Tell you what, though, Aiden, when you finally get to uh, Half Life Episode 3, let me tell you, that ending is incredible. I, I, I physically couldn't believe that that was how they chose to, to end the Half Life episode, you know what I mean? Oh, so there is uh, Hicks's shotgun. Legendary weapon collected. I don't know. I don't know what that does for us. I don't know if that does a if that does a thing. Uh, would you like a, a a lovely, but I guess like a bittersweet fact? Um, the Alien Isolation DLC, uh, the crew expendable, uh, was the last time that the entirety of the cast of the original Alien film was together in one place. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, numbers. I mean, show me a person who didn't cry at the end of Firefly Season 3, and I'll show you a person without a heart. That's our exit! Cover me while I get her open! Ragnar, but it doesn't have an underslung grenade launcher, so. And J-Post, everyone forgot this game was a thing until I switched over to Game Cam today. Um... Salako Actual, we have arrived in the first cargo bay. We make it to the control room, we can pop the doors and blow this shit out into the black! You gotta run this stuff by me before you speak in crazy! Uh, you also notice, friends, that with this being the uh, the vertical slice section, the amount of like custom nonsense in this is quite impressive. So, like aliens popping out of specific vents and stuff like that, and their movement patterns are very, very prescripted. Okay, I would guess, I would summarize. Like you'll notice, they're all going along the the girders towards the other guy. I think it's because we're meant to be keeping step with him as like a little squad. So I guess I played this before because I do seem to have the weird shoddy. Oh, so Keldra. Um, Hold them off while I get this open. Uh, no details on the the Dirt and Dirt movie because uh, we're gonna go on Cheat Tuesday. We're just fine. We're gonna this. spend Cover a few quid. That's our exit. Cover me while I get her open! Get me. Winner! Oh, it's less yelling. Everyone's so shouty today. And then they all start swarming, and we push the, the great big bye bye button. Five, I have Sephora actual in tow. Coming in for a landing winter. Copy. Understood, Raiders. The cargo doors are triggered to close automatically. So hurry up! Oh, shit in my breakfast. Everybody hang on to something! <laughs> shit in my breakfast. Be advised, actual, the winter made me scratch my favorite ship, sir. It's your only ship, Reed. I secured the boat. In minutes, this ship will be flooded with Marines. So let's go find Bella. About that, mate. <laughs> Flawless landing. Hoorah, Marines. <laughs> Gotta love those unlockables. Numbers I couldn't possibly comment. I couldn't possibly comment. Somebody better tell me what the hell just happened out there! Who the hell else is on the ship with us? We do not have control over the Salako's weapon system, sir. The blast is firing on us! Where? Slayer 6-5, returning fire! Remember your ultimate system is coming down there. They're fucking shooting at us, sir! Captain! We are under attack by human forces in the control room! What the hell is happening out there? Don't know, sir. 
Sorry. Do not fire unless fired upon. Think you can get to the Salako Bridge and destroy the weapon system? Absolutely Fire being moving. fired upon. O'Neill, if you don't get moving, every Marine on both ships will die. Ignore that you sounded like a question and move your ass, Grunt. Understood. Am I a petty? We need to consider a full evacuation, sir. I have no control over the weapon system. Ow. <laughs> uh, so, Ragnar, I'll do you one better on the dropship facts. Um, uh, at the uh, Seattle Museum of Popular Culture, uh, the MOPOP for short, uh, you can see some of the OG models from uh, both Alien and Aliens. Uh, especially some of the uh, to scale uh, minis, which were fucking cool. Uh, also, if we're going to do fun facts, the APC, the little driving vehicle used by the Marines, is actually a plane tow truck used to move uh, planes, I believe specifically during heavy snowfall, which is why they have those honking great big wheels on the side. Yeah, I'm full of fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so friends, <laughs> has this joke outstayed its welcome? Or do you want to see more of this? Like, I I understand we've been leaping between franchises that I have an infatuation with. That being Resident Evil, Aliens, etc. You can kind of get a picture of Tiny Will and my sphere. Like, I got showed Alien and Aliens way too young. But what was interesting is that Aliens scared the piss out of me as a kid. And then watching Aliens after it kind of offset this oorah. The idea that, you know, these are things to be afraid of, but you can fight back. Oh, you're right, Agananiki. I do have so many sweet bonuses to unlock. I don't know where I get to use them, though. Like, if I... Okay, if I exit game, I go to the main menu. So I have my arsenal. Yeah, cool, great. We just unlocked a submachine gun. I don't know why anyone would want that, but all right. I've got cool pistols and whatnot. And if we go back to campaign, I just hit resume. Like, how do we how do we tweak all this cool shit? Captain, we are under attack. <laughs> Lost and found says, uh, "Play the whole thing. Do it, coward." Well, I'm trying. In my defense, I, I, I got myself into this. I, I can't complain. It's like, I haven't found any ammo or anywhere to change my weapon or anything. Hello, Amos. You overheated. <laughs> Amos is just fluffed next to me. That's, that's his comment on... Uh, Sir, that was a bullet in your face. Ah, it's the Wayland Utani anti bullet shield. A second volley of missiles just struck the Sephora. Consider a full evacuation, sir. I have no control. Was there meant to be a cutscene between those who just didn't play? It kind of feels that way, you know. Uh, I'm mean, just not considering my bullets to be uh, a pleasant recommendation. <laughs> Some mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Captain, we are under attack by human forces in the control room. What I do love at certain point. Oh. No, no, sir. At certain points, I can't even see my UI due to sheer blue. Think you can get to the Salako Bridge? Uh, so Ragnar says there should be an apply in the arsenal section. Uh, so I've got this. 
Oh yeah, so I can change the fire to fragmentation rounds. That's fun. Cool. And equip. But I don't think that gets us any more gear. So, in what bizarre universe would you want a quiet gun in Aliens? But all right, all right. Select and customize your arsenal. All right. Did you destroy the weapon system? Okay, so I can change the upgrades. Understood. What a war. Hey, Andor, how are you doing? It is the 1st of April, and I'm being a terror. How are you? <laughs> ah, yes, the Wayland Yutani solid, solid Shield Yard. A, uh, a strange unit of measurement. Andorf, how are you we doing, are friend? By human forces in the and what the thank hell you is for happening out there? 27 know, That took me three reads to be able to get it. Think you can get to the Salako Bridge and destroy the weapon system? Sir, how in the hell? Oh, you and the children. That NPC objected to you being a terror. Spare you a sword. They did. Um, and caffeine, thank you. I think. Wait, caffeine, is that the first 54 months? Hang on, let me, let me pause this. Kimball, go get some sleep. I'm sorry I inflicted this nonsense upon you before bed, but your fucking models look super cool, and that's what matters. Yeah, time. Oh shit! Andorf unseating bacon. Oh, okay, so hold B. Press and hold B, perhaps press and hold. Okay. So primary. Oh! This is dumb. Also, that laser is completely off. Oh, so there are special ones. And our secondary tactical shotgun, Hicks shotgun. Oh, caffeine! Did you see the the shoddy? Another yeah, shoddy on the bottom. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. No, I saw I... a documentary once on how ships are kept together. It was so riveting. <laughs> Puns. Puns, please. Puns. Um, so Barbels, thank you for thirty-seven, uh, thirty-six months. Puns for fifty-one. And caffeine. Yeah, no, caffeine. I think you're the first person to proc fifty-four. So, congratulations. Uh, I'm being a terror, in case it wasn't obvious. Oh, that does not feel good. Man, no wonder, no wonder I changed weapons. <laughs> this pulse rifle does not feel good. We need to consider a full evacuation, sir. I have no control over the weapon system. Like, if the iconic weapon from your franchise doesn't feel fun. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing, babies? Ah, lordy, lordy. <laughs> Number says, what if instead of this we played literally anything else? Um... This is a okay, you know what? Let's put this up to a vote. Let's put this up to a vote. So I'll, we'll do five minutes. Uh, don't worry, Caffeine. I'll set up the vote. Um, I'm just sorting it out here. All right, so uh, we want vote. Because I do actually have a collection of games in my back pocket that aren't this. So... 
Uh, new game. <laughs> new game? Question mark. First one. Uh, anything but this and let's go marines. Ma. Marines. More alien. Allens. However, I'm going to make this interesting. <laughs> I'm going to make this interesting. Yes, you can vote more than once. Um, so, anything but this, and we will change game. Go Marines, more Ali. Uh, it means we keep going with this. You have five minutes to decide. But friends, mead points are enacted. <laughs> How badly do you want to change game? That's what I'm asking you. The poll is live. The poll is live. Neil, do you copy? We just got hit with a massive counterattack by human. I'm here. I'm here. I'm laying low in a storage room off a of cargo bay three. Okay, sorry, this is one of my bugbears about larger portions of the Alien franchise. Is that the amount of time it takes for a chest burster to pop out of a person after a face hugger is often so wildly inconsistent. And I'm like, there's a there's a gestation period. It takes time. It's not <laughs> Uh, numbers, yeah, apparently people really do want me to suffer, but it's still close. It's still close. All right, stand fast, kid. We're coming to get you. But yeah, sorry, it's just, it's one of my bugbears that... Those are guns for hire. Which means what? It means forget the rules of engagement. They're trying to hide something, and we sure as hell ain't supposed to be up in here. So exterminate with extreme prejudice. Roger that, Bell. Urata ashes. Get it done. Ah, equip your grenades and throw them! Yeah, yeah. I've actually, I've got to unequip this laser, because it is doing my head in. Now I know what it's like to be caffeine. Because the laser's wrong! It's on the side, but it's pointing straight down. No, 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 don't like it. All right, Andorf, we'll exterminate with a little prejudice as a treat. I just, I wonder who's gone into the Aliens franchise and be like, I really enjoy this, but I wish I had a teeny tiny little submachine gun. <laughs> it's the shoddy with another shoddy underneath. Hey, Caffeine, Caffeine, check it out. What if I, what if your shoddy had more shoddy? Um, and yeah, Jam, it is, it is 50-50 with like halfway to go. Oh, fuck. God, this gun sucks. It should be illegal to make an Aliens game where the pulse rifle sucks. Oh, shit, it's blocked. It's really blocked. Let's not go that way. We bloody can't go that way, can we? I mean, if only we had our cutting tools with us. Oh, wait. It's a double-barreled shotgun, but not like it's supposed uh, to be. That's a bad sign. What do you want to do? I don't know. You know how to use a power loader? I loaded ordnance a bit during basic. Use the power loader to open the exit. You know what? I think this power loader section was the last bit I played. <laughs> All right, power loaders are fully articulated. Right to attack, left to use the left arm. So, cha, cha. Now I can jog in this thing. Excuse me, are you a functioning turret?
Guess who's forklift certified? This guy. See this on our camps. Who are these people? Yes, those definitely are some open eggs. And I sure hope Waylon Yutani isn't smuggling people up here to do shady shit. Invested in you by six votes. <laughs> by six votes. <laughs> Lost Flowers contributed 8,430 channel points for that. Fucking hell. No! Oh, God! <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry about it. You can just throw him away in this. Um, again, in AVP 2000, a facehugger, if it got you, it was an instant kill. Because that's how the fucking movies did it. Dr. Stanton, I'm rejecting your transfer request. And I'm rejecting it for one simple reason. There's nothing to be nervous about. I understand what you're going through. Believe me, a few weeks ago, I practically was you. But I've been assured, assured, mind you, that our safety Priority one. By now you'll have noticed the extra security provided by our benefactors, and as long as the PMCs are on the Salako, you will be safe. <laughs> Alright, a lot of you want me to continue, let's be honest, suffering. I I put myself into this bit, and by golly, I'll see it through. Oh. Okay, alright, you know what? Let's Let's pause. Let's take a beat. So again. That was a Xeno combat upgrade. Hmm. Anyway. Um, let's see if we can find more things to love in this. Like, let's challenge ourselves. Because it's easy to point and laugh. And, like... Aliens Colonial Marines has kind of faded from the public consciousness. It's it's not as big a disaster as, say, um, good old uh, Duke Nukem Forever. But it will be certainly remembered. Also, weird how Gearbox always seems to be kind of part and parcel when it comes to that stuff. Alright, which bloody where am I supposed to be going? Guy here! Guy here! Walls are confusing! And I don't mean sexually! Although you should probably have a good talk with your parents. <laughs> Sorry. Gonna... Oh, here we go. And Verdant Flow, welcome to Super Duper Wooper Art House Video Games. I will be your host. Will show you the best of RT. I can't even. I can't even keep the bit going. Why do you lock that up with me? Ooh, sticky. Yeah, Ragnar again. The sound design is incredibly well done. Uh, and yeah, it was six votes. Uh, do you want to know the games I had on these sidelines? Um, I had uh, Second Sight, a classic third-person shooter that does some really clever stuff with, like, uh, unreliable narrator. Sorry, unreliable narration. Yeah. Uh, I also had a 
pseudo condemned sequel. No, sorry, the thing I will say though, uh, and I know we're going for the positives, so I'm going to say positives for another game. Um, the Al uh, Alien vs. Predator, the Rebellion did, which has been referred to now as AVP 2000. They made the facehuggers the most fucking terrifying thing, because, you know, there's fuck all you can do against them. If they jump on you, they get, your, they get their tail around your neck, so they'll choke you out, even if you manage to stop them. And then they're just set. If you cut them, they bleed acid and will melt through your fucking neck. So there's, there's bugger all you can do them once they get on you. And I really appreciated how they treated facehuggers with that level of lethality. And I understand that that doesn't bode well for a AAA audience. AAA audiences do not like being cold. No. And they sure as shit don't like having their character killed instantly by things they couldn't handle. Fuck off. Face had a dodge in there. But, like I said, I just, rather than, rather than wailing on what this doesn't do, I just wanted to celebrate what some of the others have done in the past. Um, Lost Flowers, uh, you know what? I shouldn't have put it up to a vote. I should have just listened to numbers and <laughs> changed the game. Um, you can see that we're very much coming out of the vertical slice sections. Numbers just asking, Will, what have we learned? Pretty bold of you to assume that I learn. <laughs> I kept joking at uh, GDC that um, animals are able to learn from negative or painful experiences, and yet I seem incapable of doing that very same thing. Lost Flowers, for all my critique, also Angel Lives, uh, Angel Lives? Eagle Lives, which I blended with Angel Kalina. Uh, what a look. Also, thanks. Um, so, Professor Nell's, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could equate the consequences necessarily to Dark and Darker, but Dark and Darker has definitely shown that, well, again, the whole concept of um, what a lot of people have been calling extraction shooters, which Dark and Darker just does that with fantasy settings, is something that people like. And consequences with a story are fun. QTEs that kill you because you didn't know you were coming, that they were coming, aren't fun. God, I can't wait to play Resident Evil 6. I really want to see what the QTE knife fight has been changed into. Jam says, what if we have Will play this and another game at the same time? God. Might be, uh, that might be beyond even my expansive skill set. Bella, Bella. Oh, come on. It's me. Oh, my God. Bella. Is that the thing that was on your face when you woke up? Are you sure you're okay? It was already dead, O'Neal. I'm fine. All right, I pulled it off when I woke up, so nothing's going to happen. <laughs> it's good to see some familiar faces. Nothing bad Good happens boy. the end. The Sephora is under attack, and we're on our way down to shut down the weapon system. You sure you're okay? I'm Neil. I'm fine. Quit being such a little bitch. Let's get moving. Sephora Actual, this is Winter. We've recovered Bella from Rhino 23, but are being fired upon by Whalen Yutani forces. Heading to the bridge. Please advise on fastest route. Winter moves through engineering ahead for the service rail over. Solid copy, Bishop. Heading to engineering. We'll update on status as it happens. Door's the door, winner. 
and they lived happily ever after the end. Yeah, I think this is as far as I played when we first got into it. I remember these white corridors. I remember being both uh, a little frustrated and a little confused with where we were going. <laughs> I numbers that would make for a much better story. The reason I keep drinking is because uh, the men in black keep flashing the the this memory of hangovers from a raid. Just visual on three Cheyennes evacuating shrap heads onto the Sulaco. Hoorah! Friendlies, watch your fire and send those way you bastards straight to hell. Now about time we got some damn backup. Why are we evacuating the Sephora? Sulaco is firing heavy ordnance at it. If we don't get to the bridge in time, we're gonna lose a lot of Marines today. 2-1, have you made it to the service rail yet? Nah. Almost there, Bishop! <laughs> nah. We're just hanging out. We found a ski ball. We found a ski ball machine. We're just, just living our little best life. <laughs> now, see, my problem numbers is that while I don't necessarily enjoy having a thumping headache and dehydration, uh, I find uh, hangovers to be uh, mildly relaxing because it basically shuts up the noise in my brain for a bit. Which... That was a dick move. Which isn't a healthy way to be, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you all seem happy with me uh, talking video game stuff until I'm blue in the face, which is something I genuinely love doing. So... I'm not a man wanting for uh, for conversation, that's for sure. Oh yeah, uh, so Lost Flowers, uh, the, the quick uh, life cycle is Queen make egg. Egg make face hugger. Face hugger jump onto living creature. Plant thing. Thing pop out of living thing. Thing now xenomorph. Um, while I don't know if it's considered canonical, I know, I guess it is because of Aliens 3. The creature takes on a level of uh, aspects from whatever it jumps out of. Like, that's basically how the xenomorphs achieve, like, genetic diversity. Uh, the idea being that then the, the xenomorphs then run out, grab more hosts, Queen puts more facehuggers on them, so on and so forth. But the yeah, the facehuggers' whole job is essentially to implant eggs and die. It's not it's not a glorious, glamorous job. And um, while sadly it is currently stuck in um, abandoned where hell. AVP2 had you play as a face hugger at the beginning, which was fascinating. This is Sephora Actual. Scramble anything you have to get our men out of there. Sephora, abandon ship. Repeat, abandon ship. All personnel on the USS Sephora. Captain's radio call is now Sulaco Actual. Over. Sulaco Actual, it's winter. We're on the service rail en route to the bridge. What's your situation in Cargo 1? Winter, we're still sustaining sporadic fire, but stable. Mission says the support can't take much more of this before the reactor fractures and goes critical. Well, I think this was the point which I stopped playing. See, now I've actually got to, like, I've got to struggle through this. Y'all, <laughs> y'all have, y'all have put in a lot of mead points. Here we are. Um, numbers, I, uh, I'd have to look at the timelines, but I think it's safe to say that, yes, uh, the whole Cell Saga does take cues. I mean, Cell's part Xenomorph, part Cicada. That's not a controversial thing to say. Um... 
Now, someone who understands, like, anime manga stuff would be able to tell you better, but, like, Alien and Aliens had a huge, huge influence on Japanese media. Do not ask me why and why it was that those films ended up, like, transferring over, but, yeah. Um, the Daikon... Uh, this is so the Daikon 4 video clearly shows the uh, Xenomorph like stomping around and having a good time. Abandon ship. Repeat. Abandon ship. All personnel on the USS Sephora. Captain's radio call is now. Sulaco Actual. Over. Sulaco Actual, it's winter. We're on the service rail and route to the bridge. What's your. Winter, we're still sustaining sporadic fire, but stable. Bishop says the Sephora can't take much more of this before the reactor fractures and goes critical. Our boys are counting on you. So now they're dropping fancy bullets, all right. Friends, this is definitely turning into a slug. This is one of those situations where the... The set piece sound design and setup absolutely does not fit the uh, experience, let me tell you. to add heavy weapons guy. Okay, so number says sales first magra experience was 92, so with generous Toriyama might have come up with it six months weapons. earlier. Alright, that makes Russ, sense. What is happening? The guns aren't that accurate. We're killing our own marines out there. Yes, we are. God. Yeah, this is definitely the point in the game where I stop playing because right now I am struggling. I did this to me. Shotgun says I win! Yeah, just turn off friendly fire, boy! Water. I've, I've actually got to knuckle down now. Like, I, I let you all vote. We're doing this, and this is starting to hurt me. Um, but Lance... Uh, sorry, Ragnar is correct that um, Lance Hendricks and Bill Paxton were the only people who have been killed by the alien and the predator and the terminator. Fun facts there. Yeah, the Call of Whalen parts are the worst, and they're just immediately there. Like, it really feels like there was a huge chunk missing from that central segment, you know what I mean? You could use the shoddy with more shoddy. It is there. Uh, Ragnar says, after the raven you can stop. God, how far in is that? I forget. Oh, interesting. So, Lost Flowers was saying that uh, for Dragon Ball, uh, Cell was not originally meant to transform. Uh, Toriyama wanted Perfect Cell to still be Imperfect Cell in appearance. Ah, fascinating. Excuse me! Oh, he's not where he's supposed to be. Oh, someone's changing his spawn pants. 
I'll just let my NPCs handle this. Interesting. Numbers were saying that the android and cell parts of the manga had extensive meddling. Fascinating. Because, like, my actual Dragon Ball knowledge is very limited, friends. You know, there's a few manga that I know a lot about, but it's not many. Uh, this is uh, currently suffering from one of my uh, least favorite things from AAA, which is, while this title is designed to be multiplayer, because we have so many NPCs, I feel superfluous. Right, guinea pigs? The guineas agree with me on this one. I find any video game where you as the player could just be ignored. Yeah. Kind of makes me wonder why I'm here, you know? Thank you. Fiona brought me leftover curry. Oh, I'm fucking... You know what? This this balances out the amount of damage I'm doing myself. <laughs> um, okay, so numbers of points going on to say, originally the first two androids, uh, the old man and the mime, were going to be overall bad guys. Toriyama's editor didn't like them, so Toriyama made up the kids, who the editor also didn't like. So then Toriyama made up Cell. The editor said... So he transforms, right? Oh, because... Um, because of Freezer's transformations, right? Like it was expected. Uh, but in my heart of hearts, once again, I know we've spoken about this. Helsing Abridged is the canonical Helsing. So Clank was saying, how would you rate this game if this was your first exposure to the alien IP? Uh, back when I was a wee -un, I used to say that the best way you could experience something is you watch the live action first, then you watch the anime, and then you read the manga, because you're always impressed. It's always a little bit better than it was last time. Um, this feels like that. Like... I... I I am challenging myself to find things to love, and it is a challenge. Like, we haven't reached the really agonizing parts yet. This is this is the 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 dull realization. This is the dull realization that this game is going to hurt me. Um, oh shit, Nick's saying that uh, their first introduction to Avatar The Last Airbender was the live action film. I'm so sorry. Because that film sucks. And I don't just mean like it's bad because, you know, Avatar is an incredible series and deserves so much more. Like, it's a very badly made movie. Mixing up my curry over here. It smells so good. But yeah, you're right. From that point onwards, you're only pleasantly surprised. <laughs> uh, Ragnar is saying that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Their review of this video game. It reminds me again of a lot of the Gundam reviews that always start with, unless you're an incredible super fan, don't do it. Now there's loads of speculations as to what happened with this. 
Um, much like with uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, this game did use outsourced development. That's something that was confirmed publicly. <laughs> Sorry. Fred pops back and goes, Hi, I'm back! What's up? And Numbers just quietly says, Pain. It's... I'm being hoisted by my own joke. I did this to us. Someone saying taking damage here is one of the least intuitive barks that any game character could say. Not, oh fuck me, fuck me, I have been shot by a gun. Just, uh, I'm taking damage. Oh man, that sure was some damage I just took. Not, I am very shot. Please assist me medically. See, that's better. <laughs> No matter how bad it is, I'm loving the chaos and shade agony. Keep on keeping on with. You know what? Yeah, this is the this is the part in the marathon when you realise just what it is you signed up for. Like I did this to us. I did this to me. I can't blame anyone. No one sets out to make a bad game. No one, no one starts development and says, you know what, I'm gonna make a game that sucks. I wanna make a game that's based on a beloved IP and is painful and miserable. And I have to remember that. Uh, but sorry, Ed Bacon, and all of you, thank you for the bits. You should not be giving me bits today. This is an April Fool's gag turned, turned back upon me and I am paying for my hubris. <laughs> but I've got caught it. And curry is the best example of anything can be a sandwich if you really want it to. We've got pita bread and everything. It's like naan, but for nerds. Ragnar's saying that once you get back down to the planet, the game does get good for a while. And like, I do understand that with an Aliens game, you need to break it up a little bit. As much as we say we want, or at least at this era, you can't just shooty gun bang Aliens all day or a day. There's got to be something slightly more to it, right? What did we unlock? Oh, nothing cool. Yeah, as soon as we get the, uh, the shotgun with yet more shotgun flame rounds. Uh, Dustin, you're not wrong. But it is criminal that of all the firearms in this game, the one that feels the worst to use is the pulse rifle. Can't just shoot a gun bang aliens all day. You're not my dad! <laughs> Fred, you are entirely correct. Yes, I did wait until this, the day of April Fool's of all days, to play not just my favourite game, but I think everyone's favourite game of all time, Aliens Colonial. <laughs> Sorry. You'll notice that I'm struggling. And I'm struggling because I have to strike a juxtaposition between, you know, the fact that all games are miracles. Every game that comes out is a fucking science miracle. You know, years ago we tricked rocks into thinking with lightning and making math good-like. And now we have this. And especially on something like an Aliens franchise title, nobody starts out to make a bad game. Like, 
the team who made this did not sit down and go, how can we make this suck? <laughs> right? But in that same breath, like, there's such glaringly painful things. Like, yeah, the, the pulse rifle feels bad to shoot. Why? It's iconic. Anybody who comes to this experience is looking to either have the smart gun or the pulse rifle. No, cool, great. Your team designed a collection of other varying weapons. Brilliant. Can't wait to see what the battle rifle does. That seems... That seems awesome. But... To be honest, like, why am I here? I'm here for the experience of playing, you know, of playing more aliens. But in a story I don't know. Right? Okay. We get, uh, so Ragnar, I guess you're talking about like the legendary pulse rifle, right? Okay. Oh, get it, fuck me. Damn it. Oh, was he dead? Alright, well. No stress, no worry. I <laughs> just let my fucking team hack me. But the thing is, like, we're not talking about a small franchise. We're talking about Aliens. You know, one of the iconic 80s... Actually, so this is one, I guess, for the, the film buffs. Has there ever been a good term for that, like, that cluster of films in the 80s that ended up being incredibly influential? You know, the semi-linked to, like, Robocop, Terminator, Aliens, etc. Like, that little cluster of 80s movies that would go on to be, like, franchise makers. Um... Oh no, Angel Kalina! You have t you have gone too deep into the Swedes. Um, but no, the reason I bring it up is that like this isn't like we talked about Heavy Gear earlier. Heavy Gear being an obscure alternative to BattleTech that was adapted into a video game, right? Like I'll level with you. I didn't even know what the fuck Heavy Gear was until I found out about the video games. And then I found out about the board games. Actually, kind of the same with Battletech, if I'm being honest. You know, I played MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries before I realized there was a whole thing it was based on. But Alien and Aliens is fucking massive. It's popular culture. You know, it is known in, at the time, what would be considered the mainstream. So, like, it's safe to say that users are going to critique the shit out of it based on its authenticity. Hmm. Okay. Ragnar, I didn't know that, but that sounds very Paul Verhoeven. What if, what if we just stayed in this little office on the Solaco? I ate curry. We'll just talk about 80s movies for the rest of the day. How does that sound? <laughs> right? Yes, I'm the one that started this. Yes, I brought it to you all. But, but what if? What if?
Well, I'll say those numbers. I'm enjoying hanging out with all of you lot, even if the game is painful. I just... <laughs> I did this to me. Um... No, I had a thought. Dropped right out of my head. See, all right, this. This I hate everything about. That's all right, okay, th and that's, that's very redacted for me, but like, this is like the epitome of set piece level design. The way the baddies come up there, the cover there, like the, the open pit to move through, but then an obvious plank to go around. You'll uh, you'll you'll just try to hurt me. Yeah. Okay, just spitting forth nonsense noises there. <sighs> yeah, you can tell we're definitely at the uh, the marathon slog part of this. Um. <laughs> ah, potato, potato. Friends. I'm just trying to think if I have anything like uh, any clever big words or smart things to add to this like whilst we're essentially kind of like a shooty gun bang lull hmm. no numbers that is an interesting discussion especially when it comes to cooperative experiences that Sometimes having a good group of friendos pastes over very, very bad design. With with an experience like this, like they're designed with ebbs and flows, right? Except for right now we're essentially at the bulking part. You know, this is the this is the extra cup of rice to cover up the fact that there isn't a lot of sauce. Um which isn't actually a commentary or anything. The curry is amazing. I just couldn't think of a better analogy. This game was designed to be a group game as well. So there's a certain amount of the balance that's being offset by the NPCs, which... Uh, so Ragnar... Do we still have these NPCs if we were playing this co-op? Oh, okay, so... So if we were playing this four-player co-op, there would be four of us plus two NPCs making just a small wave 
But okay, I I haven't seen more than five enemies so far. So how does that balance out? Numbers, it is an interesting thing to discuss. And okay, in this reason, I'm not being stubborn by continuing. You will put in mead points. I, a vote was had, and uh, the power of the uh, the long ship needs to be respected. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, Ragnar was just adding that. When you're at six people, four players and two NPCs, the alien AI doesn't know who to attack. That's fascinating. I'm just, and I feel a bit bad. I'm just letting the NPCs have fun. I'm just talking to you lot. found just saying good luck getting that many people to play this game. Hey, it was in a lot of humble bundles. Oh, excuse me. Alright, you kids go have fun. I'm gonna talk to you lots some more. Okay, Bella just teleported behind me, okay. Oh, they both did! Okay. Sir. Sir, how do you think this is gonna hit for you? Sniper Elite Rifle. What I will say, friends, uh, is I did get to try... Hypothetically, if I did get to try the um, Starship Troopers shooter... I would tell you, and this is only if I played it, which I haven't. Uh, I would tell you that uh, it was actually surprisingly fresh and definitely focused on like uh, base building and uh, horde management, which I was not expecting. Because there's another banging classic film and a Paul Verhoeven. Sorry, well, give me while I'm stuffing my face, dear friends. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Let's call a spade a spade right now, because this is this is one of the troubling things when you work on video games, when you spend a lot of time in them, is that it becomes very difficult to critique, right? Because I know, even though this game did not do well, and it, uh, how, to say charity was received poorly, I know that a lot of people busted their ass to make it, to release this game, right? And lost and found, we're all suffering together. So, sometimes it can be very hard to critique certain titles because in the back of your mind, you're aware that people, I don't know if it's been confirmed, uh, I have heard nothing, but I would speculate that the team that put this out fucking crunched to absolute bone dust. I, I think it is, I do not think it is unfair to surmise that to bring this to launch, a lot of people, a lot of people worked some very long hours. Right? And I just wanted to say that and prefix it before, like, critiquing, but here's the thing. I am fucking bald. I am extremely bald. Like, we're being thrown wave after wave of the same looking guy, right? In these increasingly generosal themed environments. Ragnar, I will have to look that up. Sorry, Ragnar saying that uh, Sid Mead came up with the Turner Gundam. Is that true? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, an American industrial engineer who did uh, a neo-futurist concept artist who did designs for Turner Gundam. Although it's uh, Sid S-Y-D. That's what I didn't recognize. Yeah, uh, Sid designed the Turner Gundam, the Sumo, uh, and the Turn X Gundam, the uh, the villain of. Man, it explains why the designs in that are so fucking fresh. Fucking yo. <laughs> Sorry. Now, Clank, I do agree with you that no one should sacrifice their their health and spend, like, sacrifice time with their family to produce something mediocre. And honestly, when you're in the when you're in the suck, like you're crunching for release and everything's happening, it's very difficult to see the perspective of what it will come through like. No one ever starts to make a bad game. And when you get to a certain point, you either have to believe in the project hard or quit, because otherwise the hours just the hours just destroy you. But like, if we're calling a spade a spade, like I am bored. Even with Fafamancy, we're like what an hour into this. We've been shooting the same two kinds of guys now for ages. They aren't iconic, they aren't cool. Like, their design is basically the Ooh. Marines, but in white instead of green. Also, that guy's baseball cap just deflected a bullet! I think I didn't see that. I like, I just would rather be anywhere else. Now, Nick, you're super spot on. XCOM the Bureau Declassified. That was another hell march that that broke people. Like, there are people that came off that project and just left the industry. Now, I will say, Nick, we did do a day on the Bureau Declassified because I wanted to show people economy of art and how there are large swaths of the Bureau um, that went back when it was a first-person shooter game 
and it got remade into the third person y kind of like XCOM origin story. Like there was a bunch of assets that were made for first person view that were just reused. So when you're in the hub world or the, the main office, there's a handful of objects that are just wildly more detailed than anything else around them. Mm. Oh, sorry, and Ragnar, I wasn't critiquing your. Um... Oh, fuck. I wasn't critiquing your um... your spelling or whatnot. I'm dyslexic as hell. I'm never going to critique people for that. It was more a case of like that's why I couldn't remember who it was. Job's done. Uh, Hoffman was saying, uh, wasn't the AI buggy in this game due to misnamed file? I don't, I, I couldn't confirm or deny on that one, but if that was the case, that's the kind of thing that speaks to. Oh god. Yeah, he's not going to be in uh, Colonial Marines 2. That's the kind of thing that speaks to a really, really rushed development. Like these fucking corridors. It's like you're trying to bore me. Oh, where to go, teleportation squad? Uh, d a cult game dev Nick was saying that uh, every story they hear from the development of XCOM, the Bureau, was hellish. Yeah. I also think that they got the the shitty end of the stick because the XCOM that ended up being wildly successful was meant to just be a spin-off. And Jam, I do believe that's what just happened. Both ships are firing at each other. Who took control of the Salako weapon system? I have a feeling we're about to find out. You're going to be guarding the bridge before we And shoot every last one of them. No, I thought I'd just leave him alive. You kids go have fun! just adding that there was a basketball game where they accidentally left the debug settings on the final ship that disabled a huge swath of AI behavior trees, which they didn't notice until they were working on the sequel, which meant, hey, free features. Hey, it's not a bug, it's a feature. All the stuff was supposed to be in the last game we turned on for the sequel. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Jam. Space Nam will do that to a person. Oh, wow. So Hoffman saying that they found the story, and what happened was that there was a typo in the Zeno AI code that said uh, teether instead of tether. This is why I'm not a coder. My dyslexic ass would be like, ah, seems fine. There's a reason I didn't do uh, spelling checks on titles, you know what I'm saying? Go on, Bella. Go have some fun. That was a big lad. Maybe I shouldn't have left that one. It's fine. God damn it, they got auto torts! 
Shooting those won't do any good. Get around behind them and shut them down. Oh god, this bit. Yeah, Total War Dome to ah oh, people. Friends, it just makes you wonder, like, if we have two invincible, immortal ow, 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 ow. NPC friendos, like, like, why even bother doing anything? Like, again, I'm not saying this to be mean. It's just like, right now, I am superfluous to this whole set piece. Stand still so I can shoot you. Thank you. But the thing is, if I don't want to spend more time in this area, I have to keep going. I feel like I'm being bullied. Ah, to Phoenix de Rosa. I say, what ho and welcome! If that is the same Phoenix I'm thinking, it's lovely to see you. I hope you're doing good. If not, then cool. I, I don't see a situation in which more Phoenix doesn't increase the fun times. Keep moving! <laughs> Just had to shimmy past it. Oh, well then it's lovely to see you, friend. And again, I hope you're doing good. Um, I decided to play arguably one of the most um, controversial games in the history of video games today, and now the longship is making me play it. Uh, I did this to me. Oh, sorry, Ragnar was just saying that uh, in the movie Aliens, um, uh, sorry, the movie Alien, the sections with like uh, rain dripping inside certain sections. Can you two just kill these people? I don't want to fight. There we go. Now I'll let these two handle the rest. Sorry, I think I started about three different thoughts there and finished none of them. Oh no, a Neo Shadow, it does feel emotionless. It feels... I don't know. It is absolutely a game with no... No heart. Which is a sad thing to say. And again, I'm not dissing on the development team for this. Like, you can absolutely tell they reached a point where they were like, fuck it. Now, oh, this boys. Either we get this done, or we're in serious shit. And I have a feeling that this particular section was one of those, like, fuck it, we'll fix it in post. Like, let's just get this done, let's get everybody shooting each other. This. I don't wanna. Now I actually gotta pay attention. I hope you are doing splendid. As opposed to these rotting marines, I tell me. Ow. Who shot me in the booty? The 
second hardest working booty on Twitch. It's not. <laughs> I'm not even in the runnings. God. It's just trying to get through this segment and not make us replay it three times is killing my ability to, to wax lyrical. But yeah, it's... Keep moving! But no, it's very real, like, trying to... Oh god, there it was. Alright. I was like, wasn't there a fucking turret here? It's there. Trying to balance the empathy of understanding how hard the video games industry churns through people and how, like, games like this don't end up being bad because of intent. You know, it's always a better way to think that this game would have been so much worse had the team not tried as hard as they did. That makes a weird sense. But again, like, despite the dramatic music and all the noise we're hearing here, this is just boring. I am bored. And sometimes, like, that's the greatest crime. You know, I've talked a lot about Mind Jack. Mind Jack is not a good game. But you know what? It's not boring. Not shooty, my booty. Another down. Shut up, Jared. Yeah, you know what, Neo Shido, you're not wrong. Love it or loathe it, Sonic 06. People still talk about it. In fact, what gave me the inspiration to uh, to do this today? <laughs> if you think the face huggers are scary, wait until you meet the booty huggers. I think I've met a few of those in my time. Right, but sorry, it's the the disproportionate like dramatic music versus. Actual, we have reached the bridge, sir. <laughs> we made it. You're too late, son. Sir, what the hell are you talking about? We're here. So, Uncle Actual, Mayday, Mayday. The reactor is critical. There's nothing... I'm sorry, sir, but we couldn't... Ship's fucked. No! All hands, <laughs> all hands. This is Salako Actual. All hands brace for impact. It's been an honor serving with you. Godspeed. Remember where we parked! Guys, we failed. <laughs> you may have failed, but enjoy these multiple unlocks! Bored to tears, sir. Ouch. Yeah. Got me that. Winner? I'm here. I'm getting a sit rep. Sulaco Actual, this is Winner. Come in, over. Sulaco Actual, do you read me, goddammit? Winner, this is Sulaco Actual. Glad to hear you upright. Sir, we're at the bridge. Just got here too late. Son, don't bother dwelling on it. It's over. We're now evacuating the Sulaco as well. Raider 6-5 will wait for you, but goddammit, son, don't make us wait for you. Actual out. Get the dropship drop ship and escape! We? Want that in meters, or the number of things trying to kill us? Same number? About 400. Right, that was a pretty good line. Woo! Oh. 
I left it all in one piece. Uh, let's go a different way. Oh, you think? Uh, Fearless is saying they heard the DLC so in this game is actually kind of good. Shit down here. I hadn't heard anything over. like one way or other, but. Close, Two one, defining close is kicking your ass in person. The PMCs are trying to take our train ship to escape. Get back here. I am out of here with 20 mics. Be advised, shit is exploding. Good line, delivered well. How in the hell did we not know they were on the ship? Because they didn't want us to know, kid. We stumbled on something we shouldn't have. Warning. Hull breach in progress. Hull breach in progress. Get to minimum safety. <laughs> Sorry, Ragnar Wizard. Uh, here's a movie fact. Um, the Xenomorphs are, in fact, dickheads. Oh. Oh, hello. Hello, flamethrower. Who wants to get flummied? Fuck us! <laughs> that could have gone better. Every time the um, the ship starts shifting, I keep thinking like, "Ah, oh, crap! Not another controller. I can't afford to replace. I can't afford to have drift on another controller as well." All right. We'll use this for now. There's more marines. Prototype of the 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 mama's the the queen alien. I uh, was done with trash bags. Uh, would you like another? Um, you probably have this fact already, but it's always fun to talk about. The uh, the wet glistening shine on uh, Big Mama Xenomorph and the rest. Uh, that was copious amounts of lube. Copious amounts of loot. In fact, most of the time in especially 80s cinema, when you encountered something that had that slime effect to it, it's loot. You're welcome. Now every time you see those films, you'll be like, ah, damn, that's a that's a lubed up alien. <laughs> Sorry, apparently I've just chosen the path of fucking chaos today. thrown around in a lot of like uh, sci-fi video games why are these guys still fighting us? why aren't they all running from the dog like it's already been established they are PMCs right these are these are work for hire soldiers right so why in the hot heck are they wasting their lives trying to stop us leaving there's no there's no reason holy shit what's that
Uh, Phoenix, you're right. Um, Aliens 3 was Drama Drama Island, and in an original. Ow. Uh, and in an original version, um, Aliens 3 was going to be set on a wooden. Um, basically, a wooden chapel ship manned only by priests. Alien 3 is weird. I don't hate it. Uh, and. I'm not saying it's one of the best, but uh, Alien Isolation has a fond place in my ah, my heart. Mainly because it's criminal that Ron Perlman wasn't in an Aliens franchise thing sooner. Where are we going? The elevator? Bishop, this is Winter. You have a read on the structural integrity of the elevators. <laughs> that just exploded! They have power, but the damage is unknown. Would not advise. Over. Oh, yeah, no. I don't know what it is, but there's something delicious about Geiger's, like, hate of the CGI designs. Um... Look, friends, I'm trying to survive this game before it does me a damage this time, so I'm happy to talk aliens facts until we're all blue in the face. Uh, I am genuinely surprised at how dog shit, uh, um, what was it called? No. Alien Covenant was. And, um, then we're here. Alien Covenant is to me what um, Rise of Skywalker is to Star Wars, you know what I mean? Uh, it is a betrayal, it is a travesty, and it is hot fucking garbage. I will not be forgiving it. Ridley Scott proved that he doesn't know his own thing. You know, after... You know what? What was... After hanging out with so many people who worked in Alien Isolation who held the original Aliens film in such reverence and were able to create something that felt authentic and in the same space. And then seeing Alien Covenant being a hot piece of, like, reheated dog shit on a bagel. I, I have no kind words for that, and I am usually a I'm defender Multiple signals, all round and closing. Now, oh, let's let them play with that for a second. Ragnar, I didn't know that. That the OG alien was played by the same guy who played the uh, OG Predator. Aww. Now, Moose, that is a good way of doing it. The idea that they're staying to stop quarantine from breaking. Resurrection was Weaver agreeing to the role due to a contract and deciding to eat the scenery because she was stuck with it. Also, snipe. So, Bacon, congratulations, the Yalgum is yours once more. What will you do with it? Uh, no, and I wholeheartedly agree. I also, I feel like that point, Sigourney Weaver was such a known entity for being an exceptional actor that, um, especially the. Because it was a French guy who directed it, if I remember correctly. The same guy. I know Guinea Pigs, I know. Sporty Weaver is an international treasure and we love the deal. Um, that was a French director that did Resurrection. It was the same guy that did City of Lost Children. Which is why that film is so fucking weird. But, like, he just let Sigourney shoot the scenery. And that incredible cat like, half predator, half play style. That I do think Alien Isolation captured, you know, when you are the most powerful and most predatory being in the galaxy, you're not really bothered by the same nonsense as other people. Say that um, while uh, Alien Resurrection was a was tonally a bit of a mess, um, it definitely was trying to do and say something like one of the Alien films. Um, and you know the the whole bait and switch with Renona White Ryder being like one of the main AI, I thought was fascinating. Down my leg. Um, however, Alien Covenant is just an absolute dog shit pile of garbage. 
Uh, it brings its own canonical laws. It presents us with a film that apparently nobody wanted to fucking be in. Uh, and also had no qualms in doing off-screen kills of like half the cast. It was also a thing of like, I could forgive Prometheus a lot of its dumbness. Because like, that's supposed to be first encounter. And it wasn't a, uh, it was a private contract job, so not everybody was necessarily the best person for it. But. Oh my god. Um, so, ah, okay, so Phoenix, you really do love your stuff, okay. Um, sorry, I don't mean that came out patronizing. What I mean is, um, throughout the comics and especially the AVP video game, the, the side-scrolling brawler. Yeah, that was rude, Phoenix, I'm sorry. What I mean is, I don't like bringing up the comics and the comic alien designs because it can be a bit much for people who aren't nerdy nerd fans. But, uh... Ah, oh, fine, I'll put a laser on it. Um, but yes, yeah, some of the Xenomorph combos, the fucking gorilla, terrifying. But I, I do agree with you that the Xenomorph crocodile be the deadliest. Also, if it inherits the a crocodile's ability to continuously grow... Snuggly! How goes it? What a and welcome! Uh, Lost Flowers. I don't know if there's a shark xenomorph. I don't remember. If there is one, my brain has absolutely blanked it the fuck out. But it's just such fresh ground for creativity. Like, the idea that the aliens that we encounter here are based on humans, which means they have high intellect. Um, but things like, you know, the dag alien... Which still makes my little heart. Why couldn't the Why couldn't the face have gotten the people? That puppy didn't deserve that. But that had better like speed and strength and tracking ability, but not like the 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 cognitive uh, craftiness of a human being. All right. Well, if there is a if there is a shark xenomorph, can we just never mention it? Oh, Jam just uh, googled the croc xenomorph and loves it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Fearless was saying in the original cut of Aliens 3, it was going to be a cow, not a dog. That would have been interesting. Uh, sorry, the reason why that would have been interesting is because, like, it doesn't matter if the aliens grab a carnivore, predator, predator, what have you. That's uh, right, a carnivore or a herbivore or what have you. Their goal is always to either kill threats or grab potential hosts and bring them back to the nest. Come in, or... Yeah, the total mishmash of the music versus the lack of action is... Kitish, I think that's what's exhausting me right now. Like, it's this incredible alien wall. score. Winner, this really tense, Roger that. running music. And I'm just... Bored. And again, I'm not just... I'm not trying to throw shade. It's very easy to dunk on a game. It's just... Come on. So like that tune right there. Awesome. Woo! Woo! Okay, here we go. This is... Ah, fuck! Where is this 
stupid! This is fucking metal as shit! I can't see a good goddamn. Going. Yeah, yeah, follow the line and all that. Where am I going? Oh, here we go. Alright, that wasn't quite as cool. Alright, are they going to do the thing? Are they going to do the thing? I like the fact that there's a pre-programmed message for catastrophic mission failure. Where the fuck are you two going? Oh. Angel, good to hear, friend. Good to hear. I'm not sure how long we can keep the PMCs out of our ship. Once those mercenaries put us in danger, we are leaving you here. Move it as fast as we can, sir. There's bugs all over the ship. Goddamn bug hunt! Yeah, Kaiish, I also agree that during that intense moment there was no music at all. They are just throwing like audio design spaghetti at the wall to see what fucking sticks. Overusing the uh, audio cue for the uh, anytime we spot an alien. saying, friends, that when it comes to video games, they are not built in a linear fashion. I'm sure you know this, but, like, there will be level designers working on different sections. So the team that made this section aren't the same team that made the previous really boring one. Or, in another way of looking at it, this may have been the section they had more time on. Fuck. I mean, or it's because we just survived a bunch of boring stuff that this feels awesome. I don't know. You would have to tell me. Like, I want to keep talking about alien stuff. Um, and Phoenix, I don't know if you're uh, in the... Uh, running time! I don't know if you're in the longship uh, Discord. Uh, but if you are, and you wouldn't mind sharing the Croc Xenomorph in there, that would be lovely. in our ship anymore. So Ragnar's in the Call of Wayland part to kind of tagged in. They just... I mean, they could have been, again, yeah, to bulk out the sections. Feels like we're actually getting back to some really solid sections. Uh, I mean, Lost Flowers, I'm gonna have to see it regardless, so you might as well take the credit for it. Do I want to see Zeno Shark? No. Everybody move! Get to the airlock! Raider 6-5, we're coming in! Is the door. Uh, Ragnar, if I had to actually guess, I would say that it wasn't added necessarily to appeal to Call of Duty fans. It was added... 
it was added to help pad for time. Like, because there's sections that could all be reused. And if they flipped it, like, if we were supposed to go to the bridge and then fight our way back through all the aliens, they've already got the maps built. The levels are already constructed, so why not? Why not have us go both ways? Actually, and Phoenix, uh, I've, you've had the chance to play Alien Isolation, right? Uh, negative, actual. We can't remote open the cargo door. Sending a ship is buckling on top of them. The door is having override. Bridge and door need to arm the emergency releases on the cargo bay door. You kids want to come through this door some more? Um. <laughs> that guy's super bad. Oh, that guy's super bad! The acrobats compels me. I guess I'm going up. All right. Um, but sorry, Phoenix. What I was trying to say is, um, there's a bunch of people in the longship who worked on Alien Isolation. So I don't know if you had the chance to uh, to play it. It's probably, I would argue, it's the best game set in this universe. That was my grenade! I needed that! Have a lovely rest of your evening, all right? May, may the team you support fight the best. Oh, yeah. I oh, know, it was just, it was Phoenix. I didn't want to say anything about Alien Isolation and spoil it if you hadn't had a chance to play it. But yeah, it is spectacular. Books. We are in space. Um, and yeah, so when I was at the Creative Assembly, I wasn't on the team that made Alien Isolation. I was on the Total War franchise. So it was like, we were upstairs making history games, and they were all downstairs making cool as shit. Uh, well, the best Alien game that we've ever had. Garbage. I'm not allowed to jump down that bit. Nah. Peace out, guys. <laughs> you all can do your own shit. <laughs> Wee! Uh, it's actually Ragnar. Um, the the answer to that is really boring. I can tell you if you want.
ended. Yay! Um, so yeah, so Ragnar, to answer your question, it's, it's a really boring one in that uh, anything involving the Aliens license at the time still had to be approved by 20th Century Fox. Because whilst Sega had the license to make Alien and Aliens video games, that meant that they still had sign-off so that you couldn't, I don't know, put a alien in a flowery dress and have it do the dance number from uh, Spaceballs, even though you wanted it to. Uh, so it would have meant a whole heap of approvals, which is boring and not fun. It was dead. There's nothing wrong with me. Did its exterior resemble bones, white in color, almost like a spider with a tail? Yeah, my throat hurt a little. Fine. Are you? Bella, you're gonna die. How do we know that? It happened in Keys. <laughs> Sorry, the, the default faces do not fit the gravity of this situation. Colony called Hadley's Hope, not too far from here. What's left of it? Lorry. Our short waves don't work for shit down here. Lorry. We need to find a way to regroup anyone who made it off the Sulaco. What happened to it, sir? Best we can tell, the atmospheric processor blew like a 40 megaton bomb. That doesn't sound too hopeful. All we got, kid. Keep moving. Sir, are you planning on talking about what just happened with Wei Yu? I think it's safe to say that the United States Colonial Marines are at war with Wayland Utah. Okay. So back me up here, friends. Back me up. So, like, the Colonial Marines were never paid by Wayland Utah, but Wayland Utah were one of the primary colony operations of which the Colonial Marines were meant to be, like, support and protection for, right? Like. And yeah, Phoenix, um, Harley's Hope is nice. I mean, this time of year, like when you're off season, it's a bit different. But I mean, like, I like it. I I think it's got uh, I think it's got a lot to offer. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this bit. I don't know where I'm going, and no one's stopping me. No one stopped me all day. In fact, when I offered, when I offered no more, you all were like, Nah, let's see where this is going. It's always rainy on LV426. No, 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 no. How is that even on your back? Are you magnetic? Other bishop, how is this? It's just stuck on there. Okay, cool. You know what, Lost Flowers, that's a good point. Half the votes were to stop. Uh, also, the other two characters have just left us. Okay, so again, things to like. Look at that fucking fog coming up. Like, obviously that is like animated texture stuff, but it looks gorgeous. And as much as I will... Jesus Christ, Bishop, get the shit out of me now. And as much as I will rip the piss out of people for Blorange, like, Aliens is responsible for the coolness of Blorange. Uh, Scotty Doggy, this is Aliens Colonial Marines. How are you? Happy April 1st! Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Phyllis. Uh, Scully says they played this at some point, but they don't remember. Ah, yes, that's called a trauma response. <laughs> Sorry. I'm being an arse today. Um... But yeah, no, sorry, jumping back, jumping back. So yeah, um, so Phoenix, and I guess peeps who I haven't talked to this about, like, it was fascinating getting to be at ground zero for people making Alien Isolation, and like, I Change was... Change of subject. Sir, what do you know about the Marines that were sent here 17 weeks ago? Same as you. Two full squads dispatched with a Wayland yutani escort in the city. The city of Warren Officer named Ripley. The shrap that named Hicks small girl were all that survived and made it off planet in the Sulaco. They were in cryo through landing on Ferry 161. Are we to believe Wayland boarded the ship and brought it back here? Why would they do that? That doesn't make any sense. No, it most certainly doesn't. Eyes up, Reed. The answer is greed! And yeah, here we go. The iconic APC. I always loved this fucking design because this felt so... This felt so uniquely sci-fi, and yeah, it's built out of a feckin' um, uh, a vehicle used to taxi planes. You know, so sorry, sorry, I was half saying, but like, I was not surprised Alien Isolation turned out as good as it did because the whole team that worked on it, like, fucking loved it. Ah, oh, piss. Yo, did anybody get the uh, Airbnb number for our, our Hadley's Hope stay? Because might need to get a refund. That seems fine. Heard that right? oh, hey, Don't want to stick you. around and find out what it We've was. officially We've officially reached a level of, like, psychic communication. <laughs> uh, and thank you so much for curry. Uh -huh. Fiona bought me more water. It's great. This is, like, this is my little marathon, you know. Fiona's kind of, like, run alongside, give me water, <laughs> hydration, making calories. <sighs> oh, interesting. Ragnar's saying that after... Uh, LV-426, uh, the states came up with the Colonial Protection Act that allowed colonial marines to fuck with Wayland yutani even if there was a hint of alien fuckery. Oh. Ah. Because, yeah, because Resurrection is well after. I forget the... Because they're not colonial marines for um, Resurrection. They're like a different branch of government, if I remember rightly. Yeah, and so Phoenix, like, I really wish the Alien Isolation documentary had done more on, like, how much research and attention was paid. Like, I remember sitting next to Werther's when he was um, doing some initial concepts, not concept art, but concepts of how the, if there was a flamethrower in Alien Isolation, how would it work? And, God, just the details he poured into it was just exceptional. Um, for a while, there was a makeshift flamethrower uh, around the offices, which I saw a few times, which I believe was partially used as a drawing prop and partially from the idea that, like, in Alien Isolation, you're playing as a fucking... Um, you're playing as an engineer. You're playing as someone who builds shit with their hands. Are you going to have access to a military-grade flamethrower? Fuck no. But you can make one. <laughs> oh, Snuggly knows where the Airbnb is. It's there. And there. And also over there. And I think that's a bit of the kitchen. Look like much, but Hadley's hope might be the only thing that can keep us alive. We have an operation set to get up. I admire your optimism, sir. We are absolutely fucked. And you know what, Kaiish? Lampshading plot holes with... Nah, it doesn't make sense. You're right, it doesn't feel good. 
It's kind of up there with. Um, All right. We Let's don't have time to explain where we don't have time we to got explain. Over 100 trap heads to round up. Now, it is worth saying that Ragnar, uh, who I think out of all of us has put the most amount into this, did mention... Jesus Christ, Bishop. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Bishop. Um, Ragnar was saying that this is the good section, and I do not mind trundling through this. Like, honestly, friends, what's the point of the stream? To hang out, chat with you lot. And this is our talking point. Because this seems incredibly authentic. Now, I will admit that AVP 2000's um, a bunch of devs dressed as marines yelling at you still does a very, very good job of summarizing that experience. But... Oh, are we just leaving the fucking door open, Bishop? God damn it. This place might actually provide us some cover. Leaves the door open. Uh, Phoenix says they enjoy the alien theory for their alien law. Oh, which one? while we're uh, dealing with mournful trumpets in the ill. Oh yeah, Scotty, I read so many tutorials on how to build an airsoft pulse rifle. Um, oh, Aliens Theory is a YouTube, your channel, oh shit. No, you know what, I'll, I'll have to start churning into that because I'm kind of lacking things to half watch at the moment. Uh, so I'll definitely give that a, a watch. Because most of my knowledge is just from being fucking obsessed with aliens for most of my natural life. So thank you. Um, oh yeah, so Scotty, what was fascinating is that one of the... Um, one of the ways to do the counter on the airsoft version was essentially you start with like 99. And the digital counter ticks down as you pull the trigger. So it's not counting shots, it's just counting time. And when you take the magazine out, it breaks the circuit. So when you click it back in again, you get a whole one. <laughs> oh. Fearless, I wonder if I would be a good person for the Aliens tabletop RPG. Like, I know too much. I couldn't be surprised at, like, face huggers or alien stuff. And I'm worried that, like, I'd be that person being like, well, actually. Like, that's that's the level to which I go with all of this nonsense. Oh, interesting. Ragnar says that the Nerf pulse rifle counts down via light sensor. I guess that makes sense. Nerf bullets are nice and big and chunky and easy to look at. The, look, it is the... Stop that incessant clicking. No. Right, misnomers, thank you for gifting a sub to Phoenix. That's really fucking cool of you. Uh, while I have not gotten to hang out with Phoenix as much in the real as I was like, they are an exceptionally cool person. So, yeah. Misnomers, that's fucking cool of you. What was quite funny, uh, Scotty, is uh, on the subject of, like, airsoft pulse rifle, one person tried to do a build using the spring-loaded shotgun underneath um, and didn't take into consideration that without a handle, the structure of the plastic isn't strong enough to cock the spring on, so I ended up cracking the whole thing in half. Good times, good times. <laughs> Okay, so we had this conversation yesterday about, like, if you had an infinite budget for a game and could do anything, like, what would you do? Now, obviously I have too many ideas, but here's what I want. I want the Aliens license, and I want to do a co-op extraction shooter. So what I want to do is I want to put everybody together. You sign up in a team, dropship drops you off, you are given an objective, get in, do the objective, get out. And... I want to throw nightmarish scenarios at players. I want to create the situation where people are be like, all right, there's no way we're all going to make it out, but I'm staying behind. Well, so Ragnar, 
I'm not saying fire team is bad, but fire team's construction is a cooperative, essentially wave based shooter. It's designed for every person in the team to feel like they have a role and a goal. You know, it's all about getting through it together. You know, it's the it's the Left 4 Dead experience. You know, it's a it's a roller coaster that we all ride. I want to create something that goes. Half of you are not coming back from this alive. This this will be brutal. This will be harsh. Essentially, closer to GTFO and its unforgiving nature. But I like creating longer form experiences. I like the idea that you sign up for a game that's going to take 45 minutes and whatever happens at the end of it, you're going to have a story. Win, lose, or draw. Sorry, we're hitting a bit of clip in there. I mean, shit, Scotty, if I could... If I could convince players to play the experience with picking something up on my tracker, with only in-game comms, uh, that would be perfect. Like the idea that people have to split up and can get lost. Uh. Yo, you picked up somebody's lost blanket on your track. <laughs> Show false positives. Damn. Yeah, Phyllis, that is that is certainly a medical room. I couldn't tell if it was the medical room, you know what I mean? Well, so Dustin, I like the idea that there's a level of failure that has like spongy story stuff to it, you know what I mean? <sighs> Sorry, that was a big stretch, my apologies. No, I... Here's the thing, I don't have the resources to work on multiplayer experiences. It's not currently viable for small teams to do that. It's not easy to prototype and it sucks. And what I hate is that most of the concepts that really, really intrigue me, the kind of shit I'd love to work on, are multiplayer experiences. I like the idea of creating something that you experience as a team, that you come away with with a story. And I've been obsessed with that. Jesus fucking Christ, Bishop, I nearly pissed myself. Get your dead fish eyes out of here. Jesus fucking androids. Um, I love Deus Ex. Shocking, I know. I'm doing the big reveals. But with Deus Ex, I got into a blazing row with a friend of mine. We'd both been playing it all weekend. And we started arguing about the fate of our brother. And, God, I at this point, the story's been told so many times, it's all blurring into each other. But basically, one of us had saved, you know, JC Denton's brother in one hand. Um, one of us had put the couch in front of the door to block the secret agents, had kneecapped the MIBs, and then gotten out the fucking way. The other had taken the brother's advice and bugged out the window whilst the brother got shot to shit by MIBs. And this created two stories, two experiences. And I realized that whilst they were brilliant, it was only once we started sharing those stories that it became powerful. Now, admittedly, we argued for like a whole fucking day until we found out that it was a branching story. Each, uh, each one accusing the other of having not actually played it, just like fronting, you know. But <laughs> how do I unpiss my colonial genes? <laughs> uh... That that bloom, that bloom, that bloom. I mean, shit, if we're talking money, no question, uh, how many of you have seen Nope? Because the idea that you could create a scenario in a multiplayer game where you have to think that hard outside of the box... Winner, get a welder through that damn door. Or don't. We're good. But yeah, this section is definitely where a larger portion of the uh, uh, development attention got spent. I 
close the door, but there we go. We need to get this up and running. Bishop, see what you can do. Of course, sir. Put the smart gun case on the table over there. Winner, see if you can cycle the terminal to power the table on. I can close the door I've welded open, but not the. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. Oh, that's Looks like somebody went through the floor. Or something. Oh, shush. We all know. Oh, uh, no, sorry. Um, So these are. I turn the light on. God, these are like transparent textures. Oh, that's fascinating. Sorry, I'm just uh, admiring the detail. This is definitely, definitely one of the sections they built early on in development. Because, like, look at the quality of this area. However, there is also a discussion to be had that you can't ask users to sit through dull, boring, bad segments before getting to the good shit. Like... Yeah, uh, Nick, thank you. That was the fucking term I was scraping for. Right, get your asses back over here. Bishop and myself will shore up here and start diagnostics on any system that'll boot up. Bella and Reed will head out to the comm relay tower and secure an uplink to all our boys out there. Call them up. Get them back. Sir, I'd like to go with them if possible. I can protect them. Curb it, Nugget. You and Winter are going to sweep the perimeter of the compound and plant motion sensors that we can monitor from here. Understood. We're on it, sir. Place motion sensors and establish a perimeter. Sir, do you realize there is a great big hole in the fucking ceiling and those things can climb, sir? No, I'll just uh, I'll just go put their motion motion detectors yeah, out. Don't worry. Me nugget back there. Affirmative, Nugget. Let's get these sensors up ASAP. I want to get back. I know you do, man. This protects us all, not just Bella. Oh, Ragnar. I did not know that. Now, was it Bill Paxton that was originally going to play Robocop and um, was having a substance problem at the time? Or am I having like a hallucin, I think? Ah. Why did you do that? Bishop, this is Winter. The first motion sensor is in place, over. Roger that, Winter. You got four more to go. Uh, well, Ragnar, it may be one to, to check on, because I'm not 100% sure in my knowledge there. But I do know that there was uh, a gentleman who was supposed to play Robocop before Peter Weller was brought in. Is this one of those things that was on Bella? Winter, what is going on in here? I can't see because of the bloom, but I guess... Okay, I think this is meant to be the iconic. Yeah, here we go. This is the iconic room. All right, just got the second sensor up and running. Affirmative winner, all clear to continue. Let's all sleep in that creepy science experiment lab. <laughs> I'll bring s'mores. <laughs> Mr. Marston. Yeah. And honestly, like, considering the technical challenges this team had. Looks like somebody put up a hell of a last stand here. The guns are dry. Every bullet. Oh, this one's got ten left. Good at math. Good at math.
Bishop, you should have a clear link to sensor 3, over. Clear copy, winner. Sensor 3 has solid link. God. Here's the thing, friends, is after struggling through that earlier segment, like, it feels like we're actually getting in some good atmospheric game here. God. This is our reward. And do you know what's, do you know what's fucking wild? Is that the, seg the section fighting Wayland yutani people in the original was absolutely where I just stopped playing. Like, I just checked out wholesale. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. That's me, uh, multi track drifty potato. God, these last few days have been a lot. I'm not sure what a Zeno combat upgrade is. I have not the fucking slightest clue and apparently we have not gibbed any enemies which i would i would disagree with but there we go oh god i just want to talk about fucking 80s movies and fucking uh, also what what fucking happened to my flamethrower i know we found one there's Hicks's shotgun. There's the tactical and the pump. And all that good stuff. And there's the secondary. Alright. Maybe it's in tactical. We've got fire bombs and claymores, but. It's not inside our. But yeah, you were all there, right? You all saw. I picked up a flamethrower. Okay, Bishop. Looks like Sensor 4 is operating at nominal. Affirmative winner. One more to go. <laughs> and nothing bad happened. The end. God, like, here's the thing. The pacing here is brilliant because now the characters know and we know. Uh, Ragnar says we should find Hudson's pulse rifle here. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for it, friend. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be explorings. But no, um, the pacing of this section is really well done. Because, like, we all know what's coming. There's a, there's a resigned exhaustion in the team whilst their commander's desperately trying to do something that seems like a plan. Now things are going to pop off. But by virtue of video Actual, games... come in. We got Sensor 5 operation. You should be getting a perimeter. Report if nominal, over. Roger, when out of the perimeter, looks good from here. Ah! Gold it! Bishop, what the hell is going on? Power surge. Winner and O'Neill. The sensor in the moor just went offline. Figure out what happened to it and get back to operations. Actual out. Winner, O'Neill. Your location has been compromised. Get your asses back to operations ASAP. Come on, fuckers! Let's fucking have some! My name's James Cameron, and I've come here to stop your tail off your face! What was that? O'Neill, did you just commando roll with a smart gun? Hey, 
Hey, up, it's me, James Cameron. Oh, fuck oh, no. I invented the Navi, and I also invented this place. Oh yeah, Scotty, um... I wholeheartedly agree. Sorry, I was trying to stifle a burp there. An Arnie Robocop would have been... A very exceedingly different film. Um... I remember, I don't know, did Arnie ever do any Paul Verhoeven films? Because... I can Verhoeven was very big in movies having like a meaning and shit. Oh yes, Total Recall! Thank you. Really? gaping hole in the wall. If only someone had warned you! Slippery little bastards, huh? Winner, I saw an old sensor turret on your helmet cam. You remember where it was? I do, sir. We'll run and grab it. Roger that. I think I remember seeing one in the main hallway. Get that turret next to the ammo stash. generator when we cycle the power to the mess hall. Reed and Bella have gone dark. What's this we? What's this fucking we made? Now to contact our marines. We won't last long if it's just us in here. There is an access tunnel that should take you straight there. O'Neill, winner, take the smart gun with you. Get our girls back. Head through the sewer line. That should get you to the relay tower. Copacetic? I could just get the other one, mate. I could just get the other one. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ragnar was just saying that how James Cameron got Fox to make aliens. He got a whiteboard, he wrote the word alien on it, then added an S. Then he put a line through that S to indicate the dollar dollar bills, yo, that it would make. No, like, snarking aside, I do really appreciate um, how fucking smart and how well so many things came together for aliens. Like, one of the reasons why it's a film we're still talking about and still deconstructing is it's still fucking brilliant. 
but I am going to continue to give James Cameron shit for a lot of things. The Avatar films. Alien Covenant being a hot pile of stinky poo poo garbage. Like, maximum tier shite on a stick. And I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Oh. <laughs> But I don't know about you, friendos. I'm definitely... I'm definitely struggling at this point. Ooh. I would have said uh, 2020 fearless, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Oh. <laughs> oh. Now is the winter of our discount tents. I, mean, I should probably have a look at the uh, the absolute feckin' uh, monsters you all have posted. It's very strange, though, having my objectives uh, immediately on my little keyboard. That's not going to stop being weird. Ugh. Thanks, I hate it. Uh, sorry, I was having a look at the, um, the shark xenomorphs. Oh. Honestly, for my friends, like, now we're actually kind of getting into the the semi-good chunks of this. It's kind of fascinating. I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm just flagging. Yeah, Lost Flowers, I just had a look. Excuse me, but... Oh, I'm just trying not to belch in all your ear. I'm just flagging in general. Like, the week back from GDC is being a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Uh, also, my body's mad at me because I'm not drinking. Smart gun fun is up now. <laughs> I mean... Well, okay, I'll tell you what, friends. I'm going to take a quick little break. Then let's, let's putter through at least the good bit of this game. Like, we've gone through a lot of agony today. Let's at least enjoy the good bits. Uh, yes, I was the one that did this. Yes, this is my fault. Um, and I will go back and clip the maniacal cackling of when we started this. Uh, and, I mean, Lost Flowers, you're right. that I can put on any game I want, but, but, I am a man of my word. If I tell you I'm going to spend a whole day doing a stupid voice, I do a stupid voice. If I put it up to a vote as to whether we continue or whether we stop, and you vote to continue, then that's where we be. Let no one say I'm not a person of my word. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to throw some water on my face and just fucking wake up a little bit. That Wayland yutani section nearly put me to sleep. <sighs> so let me see if there's some... Let me put some tunes on and all. Oh, here we go. We'll put some Jet Set Radio tunes on. Um, and yeah, I'll be back with you all in just a second, dear friends.
Oh, hello, hello, friends. Thank you for waiting. Um, uh, Ragnar was asking if any of you have all, if any of you have played this game through. Uh, I haven't. I definitely gave up on it. Um, but before we get back into it, I realised the. I realised the point I was trying to scratch at earlier, and I kept getting interrupted, which is that, like, I've talked a lot about multiplayer experiences, and the thing is, I enjoy a good shooty gun bag. I really do. I think there's a lot of fun to be had with the... Uh, Excuse me. I think that there's a lot of fun to be had in the ideal of the empowerment fantasy, right? The idea that any one of us, any one of us can be the hero of our story. If we if we pick up a, a shotgun and cock it in an awesome way that we can fight and struggle and become the grand hero, you know? With Aliens, they did this wonderful thing of they took all of the good bits of the aesthetic of the Vietnam conflict, which did have a very strong visual and musical aesthetic. They took that transposed it into space and had our had our colonial marines fighting against like nondescript aliens that would consume and destroy all life without feeling you know something that you can feel absolutely guilt-free fighting against right and there's something in that power fantasy that i don't think is really discussed enough like you get all of the good bits of a military shooter with the bad bits taken out and well i don't think that we should you know we should ignore the effect of the you know military industrial complex in our day-to-day -day lives and we should you know glorify war by any means but when we take the aesthetics of it and transplant it into a, a guilt-free artistic medium i think it's okay to play that and i think that's the the bit that aliens hit upon before a lot of other places you know, they took the Ura Marine, to, like, sanded off the the bad bits and just presented people with the cool parts. Uh, Kaitish, I think this came after Bulletstorm, but Bulletstorm was people must f uh, people can fly, not gearbox. But the thing is, Bulletstorm was also cribbing from everybody's sheet at the time. This was kind of the done thing. Um. Uh, do you know what I'm saying, friends? I don't know. Like, we talked a lot about Paul Verhoeven's work and things like that, and Starship Troopers uses the ideal of the of the the ideal of the military complex to tell a story about how fascists see themselves. Aliens is, you know. You know, you're you're on the outer fringes of space. It's just you and your fellow colonial marines side by side. And the comms have just gone dark. There's bugs coming out of the walls. Back to back. Like, there's, there's an unmitigated cool about it. And yeah, no, Fearless, there is also a, a lot of artistic analogies in Aliens that are worth discussing. You know, what I'm talking about is essentially like the, the surface level depth. And Ragnar, yep, without Aliens, Halo wouldn't be... Sick. Without Aliens, so much of our popular media would be drastically different. Um, although, when you get into the Halo lore, um, the Spartans aren't the goodies... The Spartans are the baddies. They just happen to be at the right place in the right time. Um, numbers are going to be probably mad that they left before we started talking Halo, but uh, TLDR, just in case you don't know it. Most of you probably do, but um, the Spartans were created to quell rebellions throughout the, the galaxy of human colonies who wanted independence from the UNSC. Uh, also, from, uh, I forget what the the name is for the, like the united earth government because the unsc is the navy um so they made a bunch of super soldiers to go kick everybody's ass and then the aliens showed up <laughs> like master chief wasn't created to fight the covenant master chief was created to beat the shit out of a bunch of farmers who didn't want to pay taxes <laughs> like just just so we're clear
But yeah. No, oh, thank you, Ragnar. I get all the acronyms messed up in my head anyway. <sighs> but yeah, there's still something about the Vietnam in space aesthetic that aliens did better than anyone else that has persevered. Loads of people have tried. Um, very few have succeeded. Like, for all their technical achievements, no one talks about Killzone anymore. Like, Killzone sure was a series of games that happened. Uh, I'm trying to think of a few other, like, you know, Marines in Space. I mean, you could argue that StarCraft is a blend of that and 40k, but StarCraft definitely leans more into the, you know, Texas in space, let's be honest. Nah, -uh. nah, -uh, Red Burning Dragon. Chief was Gen 1, not Gen 2. <laughs> Because Chief's the same gen as um, all the soldiers that got, all the Spartans that got sent to Reach, who were sent to put down an insurrection. Alright, I'm going to have to check on that one, because if Chief is Gen 2, that, that squibbles a lot. But anyway, um... Dustin was bringing up, like, Kill Zone, Resistance, Gears of War. Yeah, it was fascinating that Gears of War was such an experience that it it had a huge impact at the time, but it had no lasting legacy. I do find that one fascinating. And I think it might have been... This might be my critique of Gears of War in that Gears of War always hinted to having some grand story behind it. And... There wasn't anything beyond it. Do you know what I mean? Like, when it finally got to the end of Gears 3, you know, we had the Queen, the Scientist, everything coming together, and we never got that grand reveal that was always hinted upon. Oh, and Ragnar, I won't disagree that, like, the moment... Uh, the character-to-character -character interactions of Gears were very good. Um... While it might have been a bit on the nose, Coltrane's scene where he's going through the stadium, I thought was just inspired. But it was fascinating that, like, I think, what was the last one we had was Gears 4. Yeah, was it Gears 4 was the last one we had? The kind of the, the passing of the torch title. Oh, Gears 5 was last. Oh, my word. Oh, so, um, Fearless, it's that thing of, like... Okay, so when talking about, like, the, um, uh, the cultural impact, Gears of War... It's a great game series. Like, it, there was a reason why it blew everybody away when it dropped. Like, as a 360... It was either launch or close to launch title. The thing that strikes me is that Gears as a... As an entity didn't have the same kind of cultural impact as a lot of others. You know, that whole kind of, like, super future space marines type element. There wasn't anything to it beyond its gameplay and mechanics and because of that there's not as much of a lasting footprint do you know what i mean like when we all say man i love gears of war what we're saying is we enjoyed the, the gameplay experience or for most of us we enjoyed playing it with friends or playing a multiplayer no one stops and goes ah oh, well yo the the story beats of Gears of War is what really, like, drove me through. Oh, 
they're actually gonna give me a smart gun. Copacetic, sir. Winner, let's roll. <laughs> now it is time to have fun. Do not like this uh, UI though, but we'll make it work. So okay, so like the flamethrower, if I put this down, it's just gone, right? Ah. This is probably why I got a headache earlier. It's just from this bloom. Although I will say, AVP2's... What if we put chain guns in a power loader section? Definitely has this beat. Um, but I'm trying to think of some other of those like shooty gun bang franchises that didn't really take. During um, AVP 2000 multiplayer sessions, I would be an absolute bastard for smart gun. Uh, Grant takes us, what was the Insomniac game that was like World War II versus Aliens? Was that Resistance, Fall of Man, or was that something else? I mean, Grant takes the fact that we've got to think about it, I think speaks volumes. Oh, yeah, I think it was resistance for the man, right? Watch your ammo calendar. Supply down here. <laughs> Chunky. Ah, uh, Vasquez. Do we get to look at the... No, we don't. I was going to say, do we get to look at the uh, the different styles of... Uh, the different dog tags and whatnot? Sadly, no. <sighs> this is 2-1. The sewer is compromised. Anyone heard from Bella or Reed? Over. Damn it, this is 2 1. Does anyone read me? Take that as a how about. No, whoa. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of some other titles that tried to capture the. Like. The sci fi Marines aesthetic. And how many of them actually survived? Because the thing was like, uh, Kill Zone was kind of a little bit aliens return from outer space. Uh, we did bad. It's a little bit. Um, I mean, let's be honest. Obvious space Nazis. I mean, I think we've talked about Kill Zone in the past before. By no means bad. But 
definitely felt like a an IP constructed in a lab. You know what I mean? What the hell did you just walk into? Something really bad lives in here. Weapons hot, but don't fire if you don't have to. Locker, eyes up! Oh, I think this is the bit that introduces the... Yeah, is it the lurker is either the stealth one or the... Uh, the blind one. One left! We hear you, Actual. Signal is still weak. It's good to hear you, sir. Understood, 2-1. We're tracking your movements, and you're about 30 meters from the elevator. Roger that, sir. I've only got six bullets left. I want more. It's not fair. <laughs> uh, sorry, jumping back in. So, Grand Take mentioned Haze. Um, Haze was an incredibly disastrous launch. Um, it tried to do subversion of expectation and art house stuff in a big budget AAA game and ultimately crashed and burned. How much of that was due to it being a, uh, a PS3 title and the complications in development? I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you it, that one tanked. Uh, and gear graphic. I'm playing Aliens Colonial Marines. Happy 1st of April. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, while the joke has come and gone, uh, I'm still here. So, I did this to me. How are you? Something's not right. Follow me. Yeah, no shit, dude. Uh, Scotty, I'll do you one better. Um... Uh, Space Hulk, which was on the Saturn and a bunch of other. I still think about that game. Um, sorry, it was a first-person shooter based on the board game Space Hulk, but it did this wonderful thing of like, yes, you're a Terminator, right? You're the most powerful, most unkillable uh, unit in the Imperium, but. You're stuck in teeny tiny tight corridors. Uh, you always were an asshole, Gorman. You always were an asshole. Uh, actually, um, so Ragnar, I have not checked out the new stuff. I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions about new 40k stuff. I haven't had a chance to dive into it. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, it was a first-person shooter that was on the Saturn, PC, and a bunch of others. But what it did that was so fascinating is that because you are this huge, unstoppable killing machine, there's also nowhere for you to go. There's no cover. There's nowhere to hide. Like, you take out gene stealers, or they take out you. There's no half and half. And you can't stack people up and cover fire because you are the size and width of a corridor. No one's going around you. I'll get it open. Oh yeah, Scotty. I ha I wholeheartedly believe that like Alien Breed would have been an Aliens game if they could have gotten the license. What the fuck? Man, I posthumously just leveled.
Uh, now, Ragnar, I will agree. Those are some fancy ass Terminators, and I do prefer the uh, the design on the Storm Bolters these days. Good times, good times. God, one of my very first conversions. What? Ah, oh, darn it! I couldn't record it. God damn it! Everything happened so much. I looked down at my keyboard, and it's doing the Colonial Marines logo animated and spinning. Um, why did we ever stop doing um? Fucking LCDs and keyboards. What idiots we were. Oh! Come on. Come on. Does anyone read? This is Winter. I'm in trouble and I don't know where I am. Come on, you stupid radio. Winter? Holy shit, man. I thought you were dead. How are you alive? I used the last of my ammo just now and a couple of bugs. I, I came down into the tunnels looking for you. So what do we do, man? I drop my tracking beacon at the elevator. Use it to meet me there. Come on, get moving. Gotta find a way out, man. Like, uh, I assume we have a chest buster in us now? Oh, fuck me with a pee bag! Dude, that actually. You can tell the, the spots that had the attention. Um, and Trist, so uh, the keyboard that I got when uh, I got Unit 1 is a G19. So, slightly later model, but it does have the... Uh, it does have all the cool built-in shit. Supposed to be. Rifle, shotgun, pistol, crap load of grenades. Man, this is actually pretty tense. Oh! Fuck you, me! Here's the thing, Ragnar. I would have never gotten to this part had I not put this game on as a fucking April Fool's joke on you all that backfired horribly. get out of there and I'm like nah I mean it's animations might be a little janky what's up buddy see you later it's animations might be a little janky but it's the first proper like creature we've seen Noting that that is plate armor that those uh, chest bursters go through. Just, just as a small side note. Was it Hudson? I don't think it was Hudson. It's hard to tell with the bloom. It really is. Oh no, that is Hudson. Okay, sorry, buddy.
Oh yeah, feelers. Actually, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, they can gob up acid, which means that they could probably uh, chew through it no problem. Neil, there's all these husks in the sewer. What kind of bugs are these? Oh, damn it! He ran into those. There are some still alive down there, so move slowly, Winter. And near as I can tell, they're attracted to sound. But if one gets close, stand perfectly still until it goes away. This bit. Now, I remember this was the bit at launch that a lot of people mentioned because it was just... broken. It did not work. This is some genuinely good tension. Never seen this many aliens who stepped on Lego before, you know what I'm saying? Okay, how fucking good is that? But yeah, uh, at launch, these didn't work. And that might have been the thing people talked about earlier with like, um, uh, there's a, an error in the f naming convention of files. Buddy. That little walk is adorable, though. Now, Scotty, I do agree that shooty gun bang games removing your gun bang itchness absolutely ups the tension, but it has to be earned or deserved. There's a lot of people who still take umbrage with Half-Life 1 for the scene where you basically get knocked out in a black, uh, in a darkened room, sorry. throwing musical spaghetti. I feel like he just kind of like smeared his hand across us as he went past. Marbles, I have no clue why Visit alien is steaming. I, I'm not sure entirely what the implication is with these. I don't know if they're supposed to be like horribly mutilated and uh, partially burnt due to the um, the radiation from the explosion. And C Triple Two, how are you doing, friend? All the game, look at. I could be playing. Oh yeah, so to those of you who only joined us in the last like hour, this was supposed to be me trolling everybody else. This was supposed to be the one year where I get to do an April Fool's on other people. And it has come to bite me in the fucking arse.
up, man. You didn't tell me those guys exploded. <laughs> they exploded? Yeah, it's not good. They were like, uh, oh, what's that noise? And then they fucking exploded. Coming to you. Yeah, Kaiish, I think that's the idea, but that does mean that our poor character is now riddled with radiation. Like, if we make it out of this alive, we're not making this back okay. Well, that is the worst fucking thing I've seen in the history of video games. Uh, but I did just get an achievement called They Mostly Come at Night. Oh, good. Oh, good. Nah, but like for all the shit I've been, uh, I have given this, like this is genuinely well done. And it's not just about the disempowerment of like taking our guns away from us because of shooty gun bang. The other thing is that this is a threat that we haven't encountered in a way we can understand. <laughs> Uh, so, Nick saying they mostly come at night has to be the most overused Chivo name in the history of video games. Um, I don't know. 0451's right there on the table. Like, okay, look at that fucking design. I need peed my colonial jeans. Choices make it poor life choices. Huh. Ragnar, I did not know that. That is fascinating. Honestly, if for nothing else, I've enjoyed today for like learning a whole bunch of facts about this movie series that I did not know before. Follow the light is currently leading me astray, and I do not know where I'm supposed to be. Oh, there we go. Imagine, friends, it would be years until we get GTFO that would really nail the uh, shit you should be afraid of. <laughs> oh, so numbers! We actually got into a really good section. Like, this doesn't suck. In fact, we, uh, we've we been kind of trundling around the OG base from Aliens and having a good time with it. I feel like we were rewarded for fucking around.
But yeah, no, I mean, these are all things that, especially GTFO, has done much, much better since. There you are. You spare gun for me? Hey, yourself. A duck. <laughs> Likewise. I'm closing in on the signal. Let's keep moving. I lost that. Whoa. Not gonna open the gate for me there, buddy. Buddy pal. Buddy pal of mine. You hear nothing! Everything's fine! But they do a very good job of, especially when you get into this section, you really don't know. You're doing this on purpose. Oh good, there's three of you. You made friends. Also, one of the best ones in video games is still the uh, Librarian from the Metro series. Ah, so the, the twist here numbers is that these uh, Mother Hubbards are very, very important. Basically hunting by sound or they seem to be perhaps they were once just regular xenomorphs and just got irradiated to shit I'm not sure they uh, the setup but they definitely suffered the brunt of the blast going to add because Felix was saying that the librarians in Metro uh, are intelligent they are the reason why I uh, always bring up the librarians is that they have behavioral patterns so like the behavior uh, sorry the librarians in Metro and Metro Last Light are essentially these huge ape-like creatures they're called librarians because they basically nested in uh, hey, the Moscow library I'm in the elevator I don't know where it went it's close But what's really cool is gameplay-wise, you have to adhere to their behavioral patterns to survive. You can kill them, but it's very expensive. It takes a lot of ammo, uh, either basic or military. You can't stealth kill them. And they're territorial, so essentially you have to hold eye contact and not break it while backing up. And at first, that's very easy to do. So like, you know, you don't attack them, you don't run. But you also, you stand your ground and you hold eye contact. But later on, you move through areas where there's more than one of them and you can't look at two at the same time. And you have to, like, move through areas where the eye contact breaks and, yeah, it gets wild. I just... I mean, you'll know, I'm, I get very obsessed with any games where we have to consider the environment, the habitat, or the behavior. <laughs> Could you, you saw me, you saw me. Could you fucking not? You. I did not see the door behind me. Beep. Just look 
those. There we go. It just assumed I did. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I'm in the elevator room. Let's go, man! I'm not sitting around for fucking shits and giggles, mate. My guns conveniently in one bag. I left all of my ammo in one piece. Uh, where's the where's the daka daka daka? Let's try this. Let's try the big daka. And there we go. Hudson's pulse rifle. Now we're ready to rumble. Sorry, Big Decker. Uh, so numbers, uh, what's the name isn't dead yet because once again they're playing very fast and very loose with the whole gestation period of the facehugger. Uh, but they have gone missing. I'm going to be a boss. Split up! Is he strong? Listen, bud, he's got radioactive blood. <laughs> we got split up. Uh, you know what? Angelus makes a good point. It's a duffel bag. You can fit anything in a duffel bag. Me. Literally we'll try anything. To first. We got time. How do you know that? Keys. Let's move. Or, Bella, if you want to go back in the creek, that's cool too. Oh, that's good. Get some, get some, get some! A duffel bag is basically the closest thing we have in modern society to a bag of holding. I guess we just saved the day? Whoa, 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 Ragnar, you don't put a duffel bag in another duffel bag. So you make a fucking black hole like that. Put a bag of holding in another bag of holding. Okay. 
gets left behind. You know that. Protect Reed while she restores the uplink. Uh, spell to them smart guns if you may. Alright, here we go. No one needs to mess all of us, right? Contact! Contact! Weapon top! Cover Reed! Spark control first! No offense, Reed, but I will be using you as a shield. You have infinite health, I do not. Also, all right, time for the, the big dagger, I guess. yourself as I reveal my brilliance. We are absolutely in the sun. so much uh, AVP, uh, AVP 2000, specifically like the survival modes, the, the bug hunt, that we've worked out that there is actually a point where you can kill enough aliens and be terrifying enough that they will be auto afraid of you. You then have to chase them down. I couldn't tell you what procs it, I couldn't tell you how it happens, but it is absolutely something that uh, that goes hard. All right, so the battle rifle is a DMR, which seems less than ideal. <laughs> Gear. 
guess we'll put two off on the Still no sign of Bella or Reed. Let's keep moving, Nug. Don't call me that. <laughs> Nugget. That means you're little, like a guinea pig. Okay. No, we're not going in there, you dingus. Alright. Let's see where this fight takes us. It's a weird thing to say, but I am glad we've played through as much of this as we have. You know, this whole section I would have written off, and while I understand like a larger portion, it is definitely things that have been improved since launch, but yeah. I'm glad we didn't miss out on this, you know. Alright, come on, mate! It's time to rumble. Who's a badass? I ran an illegal comm tower bypass with my bare hands. You okay? Yeah. If that happens again, the boy will be scolded. That's a boy. I expect the same from you. Time comes, you shoot me. The time already Don't came, shoot Bella! Anyone else. Be no, Bella, you're already fucking. shit down here. There's gotta be a way to cut that thing out of you. I can. I can feel it moving. What? Oh. Stay alert. Check your trackers. Marker nearby! No. Time to make some friends! Let's fucking go, me! Practically dripping in plot armor. Ready up, weapons hot. Son of a bitch. We should have stayed in the hangar. No one's stopping you from going back. Eyes up, people. Watch your rounds. No friendly fire. Focus. Let's keep on it. I will say that. Uh... The, the generic uh, military barks do always seem a little bit weird and disjointed. Holy shit! Roger that! Everyone out of the field! Well, 
Well, that was bullshit. And holy glee, what a welcome. Yeah, Fragnar, I didn't realize friendly fire was being. Son of a bitch. You should have stayed in the hangar. No one's stopping you from going back. Eyes up, people. Watch around. No friendly fire. Yeah, I think Focus, you're right. Let's keep on it. I don't think I'm supposed to fight uh, Biggie Biggie over there. Holy shit! Roger that, everyone out of the zoo! Where's the rest of the bloody team? All right, here we go. Get out of the open! Hurry! We got company, guys. Well, those don't seem to make a difference. Let's fucking go, love! Now that's not supposed to happen. But you'll notice that by inappropriately operating this forklift, I apparently have stepped on myself. Done. 
Oh! Good to see you all in one piece, O'Neill. Good to see you? You wanted to leave him out here to die. Bo, what are you talking about? We disagreed. She tried to pull rank and leave you for dead. Look, everyone calm down. I was scared. I'm just a pilot, but as lieutenant, I have to make a call. We don't leave Marines behind. That supersedes rank. Hey! Can we not do this out here? Bella, we cannot risk the lives of multiple Marines to save one. We understand what you're going through, but it's hard I to I give Reed about 20 seconds to live. Hours. Fuck did you just say to me? You know, I was gonna save this last bullet for myself. Whoa! It's fine! It's fine! We're fine! Just put it down, Bella! Bella, put it down. Uh, yes, that is actually Burge. A superior officer. Last I checked, your orders were to put one in your skull should the time. Stop come. it! Just let's get back to operations, all right? God damn it, you two! Salako Actual, this is Winter. We've recovered a few Marines after getting the comm tower up. On our way back to you, over. We're falling apart. Uh, so Red Burning Dragon, that would be Bella. Bella got uh, face huggered. I understand uh, that our circumstances are exceptional. I lost 300 of my people in the last day, so take me at my word when I tell you I'm feeling this too. Reed, Bella, bury this shit and move on. Permission to. Shut up. You made the <laughs> right call and you know it. And we're done talking about it. You two, front and center. So these two lunkheads come to me to authorize what amounts to a suicide mission into the heart of the Way U facility to try and extract that thing from your chest. We're spread thin as it is. Too many Marines unaccounted for. Sir, if you'll just listen to what- But I'm authorizing it. On one condition. Sir? There's a manifest of all personnel in the facility. Send that back first. Then go get that thing out of Bella. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. There's a stable of Hadley surface crawlers. Take one and make sure you come back alive. All of you. Permission to accompany them on the mission, sir. Denied. I want to go. And I want my pilot to stay alive and get a hundred Marines back off this planet. This is not a conversation we're having. Look, you don't owe us nothing. Just get everyone else out of here so we can take down Wei Yu. Just stay out of the way. And unholy glee, yes, we did just backhand a large scale style xenomorph in what amounted to be a great big slap fight. Uh, and so far as at least um, Ragnar was saying, like, this is kind of the the end of the good bits. Uh, I believe the next section of this game has us fighting uh, Wayland yutani soldiers again. And yeah, disobeyed orders, fought bugs, got a promotion. Yeah, Wheeler Dealer, I was definitely, I was saying to people early on that there's a lot we can't talk about. Why'd you stop? I can't drive any further on this terrain. The dust alone has gunked up the cylinder so bad we're barely moving. We walk. Salako Actual, this is Winter. But we're yeah, Wheeler Dealer, how are you doing, friend? Foot. Understood, Winter. Don't forget about that manifest. Over. Ah, oh, lovely. Uh, Biggs, no spoilers. We oh, it's a military shot. They sure as shit ain't ours. Uh, we're gonna get to see it on Tuesday. For Marines that haven't made it back to Hadley's yet. Well, fingers crossed, anyway. Uh, Ragnar says, "Now comes the boring bits." Everyone, get your asses down! If we get spotted, we'll never get close to that facility. Uh, yeah, I'm already. Uh, numbers. I do not see. Uh, I do not see why not, friend. Oh my god. It's actual, we located an EEV from the Salako, but, uh. There were. Sir, there were no survivors. Xeno's got him. Over. <laughs> Understood, Winner. Stay on mission and we'll worry really? about our boys. Okay, now. sorry. So, uh, numbers. Uh, so, Big was saying spoilers. The dungeons were spectacular, only followed by the Splendor of the Dragons. I can't believe you'd spoil that for me. Oh my god. Uh, Wheeler Dealer says, I was in a good mood until I pulled up your stream and saw you playing this. Happy April 1st. I intended to try and keep a straight face while playing this for as long as possible, and I cracked within the first few seconds. Uh, and then I asked everybody to vote on whether or not I should keep going. I have been playing this game for four, five hours now. There are no winners. 
Actually, so what I will say, um, like, Wheeler Dealer, like, coming back to this, there are some sections of this that do actually shine through. And I think we just kind of got out of the arse of it. Um, but I also, like, I also understand, like, you all went through the suck when this came out. And that there's still so many stories that can't be told because, you know, uh, there was uh, there was talk of, like, lawsuits and things. Like, shit got litigious. So, like, you and I have talked about this over a beer and I think you've, I don't think you've told me all of the stories. But, yeah. I didn't, I didn't play this specifically Oh, well, Unholy Glee, I think it's because this game doesn't handle the Xenomorphs with the usual level of, like, oh, God. They do end up basically boiling down to being kind of, like, pretty basic. <laughs> oh. But Wheeler Dealer, okay, aside from a, a flashback to a dark, dark time, how are you doing? Um, you got to see you kicking ass on Valorant the other night. I think I've mentioned this before, but I do lurk a lot in your streams mainly when i'm either doing stuff or when i just want to kind of just live vicariously through friends you know um and numbers i'll i'll ask fiona what our timings are around the the D, &D movie um but What's up, nerds? <laughs> is that one in Sephora? Or is this shit still falling? It's a section of engineering. Unreal. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Wheeler Dealer was saying thanks, everybody. They're in a better place now, not having to deal with this. Um, but no, I will say, like... Winter, provide a base of fire and we'll push onto the flank. The opening section of this go. is still fucking trash garbage. Um, except for the brief bit that was the vertical slice. And the bits that we're rolling into now Weapons on fire! Uh, is more like fights against the human enemies, which are just uncharacteristically bad. But you know, for all that we've spent, like, touring around the, uh, the OG facility, it's not... I've played worse. And yeah, like, the AI, the human AI is not just atrocious, like, it clearly feels like an attempt to pad out a large section of the title. And like, we'll be stopping very shortly just because I don't have the patience for... for dealing with the humans. But I will say, they fixed the AI on the uh, aliens that uh, like track by listening. And that section is is visually interesting. Yeah, because Wheeler Dealer, you were still at Sega when Alien Isolation dropped, right? Some might say, I wouldn't, but some might say you had to deal with both the best and worst alien games to date. But I couldn't possibly come. You know what, uh, friends? I'm gonna bring the game section to a close. Let's 
Let's just go to studio mode. And let's have a chat and a hangout before we uh, before we close up on stream because it is absolutely game over, man. Game over. Oh yeah. So we had a dealer. I was talking about this earlier, and it struck me. I never played Alien Infestation on the DS. I owned it because remember back when Sega would give all the Sega-owned studios um, physical copies of any releases. So I had Alien Infestation physically, and I just realised I never bloody played it. So I I need to add that one to my uh, my list of to dos. What is this soundtrack doing? Ah, that'll do. Ah, uh, actually... There we go! <laughs> uh, Wheeler was saying that Alien Infestation was just hard, like permadeath, etc. Uh, just... Just such a fascinating setup. Because it was around that time, there was also... Was it Bioware did like a Sonic RPG? Like, shit was wild. Yeah, Ragnar, I think I, I think we all expected that turnout. Ragnar saying that uh, just to TLDR the rest of the game, Bella dies, uh, <laughs> Wayland yutani did, and I quote, a fucky-wucky uh, in the derelict ship, and you find Hicks, you go on board the Wayland yutani ship, blow the queen out of the airlock, the end. <laughs> no, uh, no lies detected. Um... Nick was just saying that, yo, let us all be clear. Conker's Bad Fur Day is the best Aliens game of all time. What? And we're not even going to talk about Elvis in Perfect Dark, the best alien in any game of all time? God. Uh, like, where did disrespect the classes? <laughs> okay. Fucking yo. Oh god, yes, I'd completely forgotten about that. We're scared shitless. Uh, sorry, uh, Wheeler Dealer was at Sega during the Alien vs. Predator era. Um, which was an interesting title. That one never gets talked about. I might have to, like, sit and have a putz about that myself. Uh, the guinea pigs, of course, have very strong opinions about the, uh, the Aliens franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Moose says, I'll heal no slander against Perfect Dark, which as the name implies was perfect and has no flaws. It was also, okay, it has one flaw, Moose, one flaw that you must concede, that for a game called Perfect Dark, it was surprisingly well lit. Just saying. <laughs> and you do, you hear the call of the nuggets. Uh, and Nick, that could have been that could have been a possibility. I mean, so like I said, AVP two thousand is still one of the greats. Um, AVP two was very very good narratively, but it definitely suffered from a attempt to streamline an experience. And then the last one, it wasn't awful, but. It's weird, Angel Kalina, I hear the same thing. It, it, it sounds like squeak, squeak, squeak. But I also, I can hear like, salad, salad. Why aren't we being given salad? What the fuck? Uh, Biggs, did ABP 2000 ship with a big pair of underwear? Look, all I can say is, um, uh, Alien versus, as it's called on Steam, is Alien versus Predator Classic 2000. Um, they ended up having to replace all of the in-game video stuff with um, performances by the uh, 
the team at Rebellion pretending to be Marines, which ended up being just brilliant. Oh, way cool. That's fucking great. Oh, sorry, um, friends. Uh, Wheeler Dealer managed to get a spy family uh, statue of Anya and Bond. The best characters, I might add. Um, God. I've managed to resist the call of um, the anime figures very well. The one I nearly caved on was uh, Tengu. Not Tengu. Uh, one of my favourite characters from Ark Knights had a very impressive statue. And I was like, oh... Oh, I could just... But I didn't. I held strong. I held strong. Uh, I'm going to put some... Uh, some of the, the Final Fantasy bops on. Because those are... Those are cute and chipper. There we go. Oh, yeah, no. An AVP 2000 was a damn good game. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, Biggs and Nick were saying that AVP 2000 shipped with a pair of underpants because it's so scary you'll need fresh underwear. Uh, I, I do miss some of those. Uh, sadly, it wasn't real, but there was a uh, there was a bit going around that Alien Isolation was going to ship with um, uh, with adult nappies because you'll shit your pants. Um, of all the games in the Alien franchise, that's the closest I've come to a, a full trousers disaster. <laughs> uh, numbers, good luck at SakuraCon. May your wallet survive. Um, I am probably not going to go to SakuraCon just because if I haven't gotten the bad lurk from GDC, I don't want to tempt the fates. Like, uh, I'll know basically after stream because uh, Fiona got some extra um, plague tests. But um, if I did not get riddled with the bad lurk from GDC, that means the gods were kind to me because lots of people I was in very close proximity did. <laughs> so... Uh, so Nick was bringing up uh, the Halo-themed condoms. That's always a weird one when you get a property as big as Halo of like, what is a brand crossover? What's a pre-order bonus? And what's like companies doing weird shit semi-officially in like other regions? Um... Whoever it was, uh, whoever it was that came up with the fake Skyrim special edition owes me a little piece of my innocence back. Um, because... No, I won't go into details about the fake Skyrim collector's edition. But it was the day I found out that Bad Dragon isn't a bit. It's real. It's real. And I could have lived my whole life without knowing that. But here we are. Oh, so Unholy Glee, if, like, if that shit gets to you, I completely understand, because Alien Isolation is incredible. It is designed to fuck with you. Like, and I think that's one of the people, the things that people do take umbrage with Colonial Marines about, is that the aliens feel just sad. And just kind of like, a... they feel like those wiggly hand finger puppets that you get in, like, Christmas crackers or at, like, child casinos and Dave and Busters and stuff. Whereas Alien Isolation went, there's one alien and you can't stop it. In fact, it considers you to be so inconsequential. It's just going to toy with you like a cat playing with something. Right. Moose, no. Not even going to dignify that one. Moose, no. Spencer, my brain is drawing a complete blank, but I am going to give it a search. Oh, wait, um, so, Fencer, are you... Yeah, from the Landfall Archives. No, I... That only dropped yesterday night. I haven't had a chance to, to get into it. Uh, Verdant Flow, different child casino different child casino. No, it was something my friend used to call places like uh, Dave and Buster's and the Ilk. Oh, 
lordy lordy. But yeah, Fencer, I have Landfall Archives added, and I'm fascinated to give it a try. Oh, and friends, if you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, so basically the team behind Totally Accurate Battle Simulator um, have done like a small collection of, I guess, either projects they wanted to do or projects they've half done uh, that are absolutely worth checking out. Uh, and here's the other reason why it's worth checking out, because it's free. I mean, Fencer, these days it doesn't take a lot to be more interesting than the, the bulk of AAA launches. But <laughs> that's another story. But yeah, Unholy Glee, like, I think that's why you probably weren't getting that fear proc from Colonial Marines, is because the aliens, again, they end up feeling inconsequential. Even when you get overrun by them and they're in your face, you're just kind of... You're perturbed, annoyed, not afraid. Like... What was fascinating about AVP... Hey! Coming in, coming in. Uh, you just missed my uh, five hours of being hoisted by my own petard. <laughs> oh, a true ara ara raid. A true ara ara! <laughs> How are you doing, friends? Lovely to see you. Um, today, I... <laughs> Uh, today I attempted to be a great big cheeky troll face uh, and um, ambushed everybody with aliens colonial marines with this being April Fool's Day. Um, the longship then voted with uh, surprising, uh, surprisingly small margins for me to keep playing. So we played, played through it. Well, okay, no, we played through the bits worth playing and at its peak, you know what? It's a lot better than I've given it credit for in the past. And then it got worse, so we stopped. <laughs> so I'm just having a natter and a hangout. How was your stream? What were you up to? Tell me your tales. And also... There we go. Oh, that sounds like a lovely day. A spot of phasmophobia and Warframe. Disempowerment followed by uh, super hyper ninja empowerment. Um, we have marveled at a bad game. <laughs> <sighs> Yay! Well, uh, obviously, like, don't post any like super personal details. But I'm glad to hear you're getting out of Texas. You know. Not saying you don't know how to handle yourself, but things things be scary now, so right. Yeah. Heck and yo. Sorry, I didn't really have anything to, to add on that. And yeah, on Holy Glee, our alien isolation playthrough provided a lot of good nonsense. But uh yeah, jumping back to isolation, like, nah, it is entirely fine to not want to play that because the game adapts to your playstyle to fuck with you more. Uh, numbers, there's there's no new news in the last, like, you know, day and change. But. <laughs> oh, Trazini, that's scary. <laughs> not not too shabby at all. I have a feeling Longship's Day is going to be a lot. Oh. oh, sorry. And to those of you who just joined us, so Longship Day is Thursday. It will be the fifth anniversary of the Longship being a full-time operation. Uh, so Fencer, I'm not saying that we are stopping right this moment, but this is definitely us winding down. Um, like, we've been going for six and a half hours, which is uh, a pretty good innings. Yeah, get to the boat. It will be five years on Thursday. 
So I want to try and do something special. I want to get the meat point system back up. Um, <laughs> but the, everything happens so much. So much. Like, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it has been five years, and why you lot put up with me, I'll never know. I'm amazed that y'all didn't just immediately rage quit on me today for <laughs> inflicting colonial marines. Like. Oh. And Angel Kalina, have yourself a lovely rest of your evening, alright? Oh, Ragnar, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie facts. Like. I don't know a lot about modern cinema anymore. I, I've i talked about this a bit, but it's like, as you get older, if you really want to maintain like specialist knowledge in a field, it means that you sadly kind of have to give up others. So I don't know shit about current cinema. I watch movies. Uh, I finally saw Note last week. It was very, very good. What was that this week? Ah, oh, fucking time travel. Um, I loved the idea of the the complexity of its concepts and interactions. And I'd love to try and adapt something of that complexity to a game. But, like, apparently Nope did a whole bunch of revolutionary movie things. And I'm like, cool, I know nothing. Spencer, you know what? I'll add that to the list. Invisible birthday hat. There we go. One per person. Invisible birthday hat. Let's go. <laughs> hey, and numbers, I completely understand, friend. Oh, I completely understand. But yeah, it's, sorry, it's it's hard not to get wistful when we start talking about anniversaries and stuff, you know? So. Uh, and Ragnar, I did know that one, but it's something that makes me very happy. That uh, Jodorowsky's Dune would end up bringing together so many people that would be so incredibly influential in cinema. However... You should all watch the uh, documentary about that Dune project if you get the chance, because it's two things. One, it is how the creative vision of an idea, when disconnected from the, the need for corporate return, can create incredible things. But also that one must strike a balance between art as expression and art as a business in this corporate hellscape if you want to continue. Like, Jodorowsky's Dune could have absolutely happened if only a tiny handful of concessions had been made and i do feel that um david lynch got a raw fucking deal because he got given that project after jodorowsky's dune was a mess and the control kind of went the absolute other way i would have been fascinated to see a David Lynch Dune film with a little bit more freedom, you know what I mean? Um, it is also a reminder that the video game, movie, or book you never make is always perfect. And especially when it comes to video games, ideas are cheap. Concepts are poetry woven in story over beers. Actually sitting down and making a fucking game is hard. <laughs> really hard like like stupidly hard like even when you know what you're doing it's still even more difficult so yeah that's why i think people should watch that documentary because it's such a wild ride now a friend of mine put forward the idea that um 
sorry, I, apologies for losing my train of thought there, but uh, a friend of mine put forward the idea that Jodorowsky specifically tried to sabotage it because of fears that he wouldn't be able to deliver the, the vision that he had seen, that he'd kind of gone too far, too hard, and realized he was in over his head, which is why he didn't concede on some of his ridiculous um, requests. And yeah, but it's a, it's still an incredible story, both as a cautionary tale and as a story of inspiration for just wild batshit ideas. You know. I'm still impressed that uh, fucking uh, Death Stranding still happened. Think about that a lot. Okay, so friends, crewmates, miscreants, and commanders of uh, literature, both legal and illegal, I think I have hit the wall, dear friends. Um, thank you for sticking with me on possibly one of the dumbest jokes I have done so far. Why you put up with me, I do not know. But this was a great excuse to talk about 80s cinema and just have a natter. There is a good... We talked about it a lot, but there is a good point to be made every time we do one of these kind of days, which is there's a lot to learn from bad video games. Like, I am not saying the team that made Colonial Marines started out specifically to make a bad game, but it certainly didn't live up to what they had initially intended. And when we look at the cracks and we understand the faults, we can learn so much, you know? Yeah, Nick, I'm with you right there so many good lessons so let me say thank yous uh and then i will see if there is a lovely mother hubbard i can pass you on to uh, hang on uh, hang on not only did i have to sneeze but other me just betrayed me from a different timeline bastard okay So, uh, yeah, thankfully things didn't get too, too off the chain today because I would have felt super guilty if you all had thrown out a whole bunch of stuff and things and then I just trolled you all with Colonial Marines. That, that would have been bad for me. <laughs> all right. So, friends, as we creep towards our fifth anniversary, I have to say thank you for keeping this whole thing going. A lot of you have put a ton of time and actual money into keeping this afloat, so thank you. To some numbers, Bacon Avenger, Wolfcrad, Edwin Tiong, uh, Gilmar Greyjoy, Crux, C222, Andor, Fearless Son, Lord Lost and Found, J Post, and Ragnar Steiner. Like, you know, it's literally bits and donations is what keeps us here. So, for that, thank you. Your moderator today was not just caffeine, but we also saw uh, Rhymes with Moose. I don't think we saw Lizzie. And Phoenix Stellarossa was our new follow. Well, I should say, Friendo returned to Andorf, Caffeine, Varbles, Pond Spectre, and Phoenix. Um, most of you were celebrating Monster Sprees, and Phoenix was tagged by House Carl being Legends. And to both the Unrequented Library and to Snuffy Varric, thank you kindly for the raids. You fucking legends! You are, Numbers, you are still top of the bit chart. <laughs> and Ragnar, as April Fool's jokes go, that wasn't the worst. see if these individuals are live. Sorry, um, God, you can tell I've hit the wall, friends. Uh, Crux and Numbers and Ragnar, all of you, thank you. 
Okay. Sorry, I'm just waiting for these varying adverts to trundle through. Alright, so friends, I have three choices for you. I have three choices for you. Uh, I have... Perfect Dark... Valheim or Crisis. Yeah, I'm keeping it weird today. Valheim, Perfect Dark or Crisis. What strikes your fancy? All right, we got one for Valheim, one for Crisis, two for Valheim. Uh, and three for Valheim. All right, the job is done. Uh, it is my good friend, Wes Wilson, who is a legend and a scholar. That's actually one of the people who taught me how to be able to do this. Uh, so, yeah, have a natter with them, have a chat. Wes is a fucking great bloke. And uh, I haven't got to see him in a fucking donkey's age. It's criminal. So, yeah, that's our, that's our Saturday concluded. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep an eye on the Discord. If I'm able to, I'll pop on and come hang out with everybody. Um... I'm gonna try not to drink, but uh, oh boy, let me tell you that Saturday, that Saturday party vibe is kicking right in. I'm like, yeah, I could just, uh, I could just get some wine, just get some wine, right, right? <laughs> oh, and Trist, you are entirely welcome. The pleasure isn't, the pleasure is all mine. Like, I fucking love doing this. It's the best job I've ever had, and I only get to do it because you lot are here. Otherwise, I'd just be a bloke screaming at a telly by himself. <laughs> Which is considerably less funny. Oh. Well, Fearless, go get yourself some good food, mate. Go get yourself the good food. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, next week is going to be a lot. So, yeah. Yeah, next week's going to be a lot, but in a good way. So, have yourself a wonderful rest of your weekend. And yeah, I'll blip you online, all right? All right? All right. Uh, I'm consistently shy to ending shows, so let's head on over to Wes. To be continued, friends. To be continued. I'm reaching for a... <laughs>